Okay. Hola, saludos a todos. Bienvenidos a Herstalks. Los invitamos al live de hoy. Síganos en YouTube, opriman like y suscríbanse a Herstalks. Les mandamos mucho amor de sus compas. Aquí está el Lucky. Thank you, my boy. I like it, though. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Hoodstocks, baby. On a motherfucking Friday night. Don't play with this shit, dog. Blockbuster motherfucking Friday yeah. night. Like, subscribe, slap your mama. Countless let's go. battles, I walk with no shadow. Yeah. Desert in sandal, the ghost with the candle. Woo! King of all crowns with the rattle of serpents. Blood, I thirst since I am the worst. Ah! Follow your footsteps, you have no footprints. I am the surface, you worthless purpose. The moon, the stars, I'm connected to darkness. Heads of marksmen, I've hunted the farthest. Village of troops, run on top the roofs. Black Sunday service with Holocaust roots. Homo Kabbalah, black magic and balas. These AKs and hollows will leave you forgotten. It's part of the season, you looking for me, Mussolini, go Davi, the world cannot stop me. I'm legend, remember me? Give this since birth, you were delivered in a hearse. Your mother and your father trade your soul for a curse. I'm a soldier, coming at you like a locomotive. Woo! Never knew I'd navigate the culture. Woo! Service at the tabernacle potion. The devil made my father, little spirit set beside me. My mother was a slave to three witches on the island. Ever cheat death? Uh. Ever wake up and can't catch one breath? <laughs> Master of obstacles, the Nostradamus. I structure the continent, the director of operas. I swing my arms, I move the seas, I change the weather. I'm 100 degrees, the god of chaos. I shed no pity, come over for the chaos. Hey, kitty, kitty, the ruler of your conscience. Yeah, in your head, I'm a monster. Yeah, take control of all your options. Yeah, I know it's Friday night, motherfuckers. Can I do me a favor and turn that speaker down over there, please? Give it just a little bit, huh? I want to welcome you all to Hoodstocks on a Friday evening. Hit that like, hit that subscribe button. We appreciate you guys tapping in, man. I know some of you motherfuckers are like, motherfucker, we got shit to do tonight. And it ain't you. But it's okay. Because you can watch this tomorrow, the next day, or next week. It's all good, baby. Um, okay, let's get with these sponsors. Uh, today's uh, podcast is sponsored by Origin Bakery Equipment. Your one-stop shop for all your bakery and restaurant equipment needs. Home base to wholesale commercial bakeries, new, used, and you can follow them on Instagram at Origin Bakery Equipment LLC. And Origin is spelled O-R-I-G-E-N Bakery Equipment LLC. And also too, you can, uh, you, you know, you don't even gotta fucking wait for a response on motherfucking Instagram. I know how it is, man. They left you fucking unseen in the DM, man. It's, it doesn't feel good sometimes, right? Okay. <laughs> Anyways, you can pull up on them at 10441 Rush Street, South Almonte, California, baby. Pull up on them. And also, too, we are sponsored by FBCountyUSA.com. You know the motherfucking gangster, uh, uh, the, the Charlie Browns, baby, the bulletproof motherfucking parachute pants, Hell homie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, homie? Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying, dog? You can take two steps in those pants without the pants even moving. That's real shit. They so goddamn big. And I love them. And stiff too. Stiff, dog. I love. I love the quality. That shit is built to last. FB County, put in a promo code Hoodstocks and get yourself a discount. Okay, I want to give a big shout out to my boy Pork Chops. Man, it was good seeing you today, my G. You big sexy motherfucker, dog. You know what, dog? We are we are sponsored by the baddest motherfucking medical medical cannabis shop company brand in the world i mean in la dog and that's the motherfucking dank spot uh dot 420 looking for good quality herb and i mean real quality hit up the dank spot in whittier where you can get all the best brands and products of cannabis you can find them at 15022 mulberry drive unit k in the city of whittier california follow them on ig at the dank spot dot 420 and if you want you can call them up right now and crank call them yeah act like you fucking want to you want to get a pizza or something you know and breathe heavy you know what i mean Make moaning noises. You know, that's old school shit. When you wanted to say fuck somebody, dog, you didn't fucking put some fucked up comment. You crank called them, dog. You know, I'm an un anonymous number. That was taking it to the party line. <laughs> what is it, it, Star 68 or some shit like that? Whatever the fuck it was. I don't know what it is. But anyways, call them right now at 562-282-7629, dog. And after you crank call them, call them back and, you know, let them know you're going to come through and cop some shit, dog. Anyways, and also, too. Shout out to my boy Memo from the Night of the Blacks again. You know what I mean? Yes, Friday, September 9th, uh, they're going to be having a 
a concert with the legend DJ Quick. And if you would like to see them, I, you know what? I didn't write down where it's going to be at, but it's going to be in L.A. Friday, September 19th, my boy Memo, night of the Blacksican, performing live, DJ Quick. And um, you can get your tickets right now at the night, no, nightoftheblackskin.com, nightoftheblackskin.com. And also, too, just to let everybody uh, on the Hoodstock staff know, we all got tickets to that. Backstage tickets. Oh, shit. K9? VIP. Can you go? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be there. <laughs> anyway, sometimes, you know, uh, I don't know how many tickets we're going to get, but what if we get, we bring the ladies and everybody, you know what I mean? You know, all the significant others. All right, this, today's, this evening's guest is out of the east side of Long Beach, baby. I want everybody to give a warm welcome for Hugo Gonzalez. Damn. I swear, I feel like I'm walking up on the ring right now. I, I feel like I'm about to go at it with someone. He's like, wait, coming up to the left, Hugo Gonzalez. Thank you, my boy. It's a pleasure. I mean it. Like, I walked in here in professionalism from the beginning to the motherfucking end, and of course, it hasn't ended yet. So I just, I just want to commend you for being able to set up a platform for individuals like me and the individuals that have been here before to really honestly express themselves and... Man, you're an inspiration, my boy. I mean that. I mean, thank you, brother. And it, you know what? The professionalism is always strong in the beginning. Now, towards the end of the podcast, is when the professionalism... No, I'm just fucking around. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the drinks start popping, and someone gave me a chocolate, and it's got mother... Anyways, we don't need to talk about all that. But you know what? Thank you, brother. I thank you for the kind words. I mean, shout out to my boy, Caesar from ARC. Let's go. She's from yeah, ASRC, baby. Yeah, that's my, my G right there. Uh, he, you know, he's sitting on the board now. You know what I mean? We'll talk about that later. But anyways, um, <laughs> can you imagine, dog? Just a, the fucking board. Bunch of gangsters, homie. Been there and done that and now fucking making money. That's kind of like what you're doing now, right? Yeah, a little something like that. But I mean, the way you paint it is beautiful. Like for a long time, I, I remember myself speaking for myself, feeling like I would only go so far in life. And I would limit myself with the radius of whatever my neighborhood was. And I told myself, this is what I got. This is all I got. And to be able to recognize and acknowledge that I could go beyond that block, it just really honestly opens up so much more. And it really gives me an opportunity not only to value myself, but to value others at the same time. So again, I, I, I say that I appreciate you, especially on what you do, because you do this as a colleague. You go beyond just a passion. You go beyond just like really wanting to do so. You, you do this shit on your free time and really honestly like not getting nothing out of it, but really getting everything out of it. So real deal, I appreciate being here. You know what, uh, and thank you, brother. You know what, we're gonna double these subscribers right here and, um, and everybody's gonna start getting paid, bottom line, you know what I mean, you know? And, and you know what, it's this journey. It's, it's all about the journey, brother. I mean, and sometimes different journeys are different. Like when we talk about journeys of doing, of dudes doing life in prison, I mean, you, I don't think you can really, I mean the journey, yeah, that's full of lessons and all kinds of shit. And you, you can't really appreciate that journey until the end. If you get out at the end, like a lot of brothers from the ARC program, your programs, all the programs that be getting lifers out, you know what I mean? Then that's when you can potentially say, you know what? Fuck it, dog. I am me because of this journey. But in the business journey and other endeavors outside of that realm, dog, um, we need to learn to exp uh, to appreciate every step, brother, and, and and just like like check it out, dog. Like I was excited to get here today, bro. I'm trying to cut through traffic, dog, speeding in my little motherfucking whoop de whoop whoop, dog. You know, and uh, and I was excited to get here. And I was like, man, I thought about. It, I was like, man, can you imagine one day this is gonna pay for everything? You know what I mean? And 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 it's all gonna make sense at the end. But right now. I'm still excited. I'm, I'm excited to get here, dog. You know what I mean? You know, and it's, I'm enjoying the journey, brother. And I know one day we're going to get where this place needs to get at, dog. And yeah, I feel like it's my calling, dog. You know what I mean? I mean, either that, I could have been on a fucking used cars dealership, dog. You know what I mean? Selling some motherfucking buckets, bro. Yeah, you know what? And instead, you're selling reality. Instead, you're selling real stories of real people going through some real shit. And at the end of the day, like, 
Like, I mean, I think that's what really counts. That's what really matters. Like, we could talk about money. We could talk about cars. We could talk about houses. We could talk about having a job that's going to pay us that. But at the end of the day, if you're able to do what you love to do for a living, my boy, you're never going to work in your life. Exactly. Thank you for that, bro. Thank you. And, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people don't ever get there, dog. You know what I mean? One day they got tired and stick, instead of making the right to their fucking getting off the off ramp to go to work, dog, they made the left or they just didn't get off the fucking freeway and they just kept on driving and they just said, I had enough of that shit. And salute to motherfuckers that have thugged out their life like that, dog. You know what I mean? They they did what they had to do for their family. There's tons of people that do that every fucking day, dog. They're not happy to go to work, but they do what they have to do for their family. And you know what? You got to fund the dream, dog. You know what I mean? You can do that still and then, you know, have... Uh, hobbies or other things you do outside of it, dog, you know, but while you're doing this, be the best person you can be at this right here so you can maximize that dollar amount, you know, whatever it is, whatever the ceiling is on it. But I, I believe that we are meant to work a nine to five job, dog, to fund the dream, you know, a fund the dream. Now, if you're not looking at other things to do outside of that, dog, then I guess you, you're content. And some people are just, they're good like that, dog. They're wired yeah. like that. And that's good for them, dog. And sometimes I wish I was wired like that to just be like, I'm good. Yeah. This is cool. You know what I mean? This fucking Honda Accord drives amazing. Probably better than a Mercedes. You know, um, I'm just saying, right? Like, you know, it's just, no, but I, it's a I, mindset. It, it 100% is a mindset and, and no judgment to, to anybody and everyone. Like, I'll give you a perfect example. My grandparents, my mom, they came illegally, illegally from Michoacan. To, to this country and obviously they came with the aspirations of being able to give a better future to individuals and and before I even go into my story I gotta express that they came with the intention of giving me a better life before I was even born and they were willing to sacrifice themselves by working overtime and being thankful to God about working overtime even if it's minimum wage just to be able to make ends meet and be able to like give me the best opportunity I could have. Even if, it, even if that opportunity meant living in a block where individuals felt some kind of way because moms was never around, pops was never around, whether they were caught up with really honestly catching up on the bills or whether they were just caught up with addiction, regardless of what the story was, like I'm thankful and grateful for the people that had the full intention of really giving me the best opportunity. And I mean, obviously, I, you only know what you know and you don't know what you don't know. So I kind of got lost in the sauce where, where the opinions of other people became more important as to who I wanted to be. Yeah. And I had aspirations as a, as a five-year-old, as a six-year-old, as a seven-year-old. But by the time I got to 12, 13, that shit really didn't matter because that shit seemed unobtainable to the motherfucking fullest. And then, and then the domino effect took place. So straight up, like, my, for those that don't know, my name is Hugo Gonzalez. I was uh, born and raised in the city of Long Beach, on the east side of Long Beach, on 15th and Cedar, right across the street from Washington. And I say that specifically for the individuals that do know about Long Beach. And for the individuals that don't know, I just want to say, like, there's a lot of similarities in every block. I mean, obviously, it's unique, but there's a lot of similarities. The similarities of wanting to figure it out, the similarities of wanting to belong, of wanting to actually be a part of some shit. And then more importantly, the similarities of having people like supporting you in the moments of needing support. Like before I got jumped in, the people that I was jumped in next to or with, or the people that eventually got jumped in with me were individuals that I either kicked it with growing up or went to school with, or somehow some way became so close that I really honestly saw them beyond just friends. Now, by, by all means, as time went by, I realized that a lot of that shit was distorted. I realized that the people that I referred to as homies really weren't the family members that I thought they were. But at the age of 13, 14, 15, I really wasn't <coughs> trying to hear that shit. Yeah. I really wasn't. I only knew what I knew, and I didn't know what I didn't know. So me being <coughs> for one to be real with you, <coughs> Excuse me. I really didn't feel too secure about life. And the last thing I wanted to do, I didn't even know this shit. Until, until like about my 10th year in prison. Like I even went as far as changing my name and that was how much I didn't really want. I wanted to be someone else. And that person that I wanted to be, that person that I wanted to create was a person with respect, a person with like a notoriety, a person that actually was looked beyond just some dude that needed help. Um, 
I was I was born in April 12, 1983. Uh, at the age of three, I was uh, diagnosed with cerebral palsy. And this is this. I'm gonna be straight up and honest. This is a story that I really don't feel comfortable talking about, but I feel that it's important that I talk about it so that I could open up on what brought me to where I'm at today, where I'm sitting right here talking to you and being able to be a part of some epic shit. Some shit where subscribers are gonna subscribe and we're gonna double this up and people are gonna get paid what they're worth because at the very least, we demand respect, but everyone demands what they're worth, straight up. Um, so at the age of three, I was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. For those that don't know, I was straight up full blown, uh, like handicapped, that's what I was labeled. And in the 80s and 90s, uh, a show in Living Color was promoting this shit, like it promoting it, like in a derogatory way, but in a way where people would laugh at it, you know, handyman helping people out, acting very uh, disabled, but at the same time, getting a laugh out of that and also getting a laugh out of any individual that was riding the small yellow bus. The fucked up part about it was that that was me. And it wasn't that it was fucked up. It was that I felt fucked up. I didn't feel like I was normal. And I remember a cousin, my cousin Tony, I remember jumping off of the little yellow school bus and someone always had to pick me up. And a lot of the homies would just chill right there. And they weren't related to me. And technically it was supposed to be someone that was related to me that would have to pick me up from the bus. So whenever evil walked up, whenever also walked up, I was like, yeah, that's my cousin. That's also like, what's his real name? I don't know his real name. That's his name. And they would let me off. Even though they knew that he was in my cousin, they knew like, he was from the block and I just lived like right there, right there. He gonna take care of you. Yeah, but it didn't change the fact that when they called me handyman or crazy leg, like that shit for me was embarrassing. It was shameful. And I, and I remember- Why would they call you that? Well, because I was diagnosed with cerebral palsy okay. and being diagnosed with cerebral palsy, even though it didn't affect my speech impediment, even though it didn't affect my thinking process, what it did affect, it affected my motor skills on the right side of my body. Okay. And I remember I was like five, six years old and my cousin Tony was like, was like, handyman, come over here. And I started crying, man. I was like crying deeply from like within and I'm walking up towards him and, I'm, and he's like, what the fuck are you crying about? And I'm like, man, I really don't like you calling me handyman. That shit fucks me up. <laughs> and, and, and he goes, wait, 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 stop. He goes, you gotta stop that shit. You gotta stop crying and feeling sorry for yourself because the world's not gonna feel sorry for you. And I remember that day because I fucking, I remember sucking it in and wiping my tears off and really honestly, like I could even feel it. Like I was swallowing that shit and really honestly feeling like, man, fuck ever feeling like this ever again. And from that moment forward, I really started a, a repressing my feelings. I told myself anything, expressing anything, any type of vulnerability is a weakness and I'm not gonna do that. And from that moment forward, I just told myself, I want to be anyone but myself because fuck not being normal. And I really didn't understand where this shit started up until I went to prison. But I really started thinking to myself, like, what led me to a point where, where I put myself in a position where I'm end, I end up doing triple life? Like, what put me in a position where I gave myself the right to feel like, all this shit that's happening, all the violence, all the murder, all the attempted murders, all the robberies, all that shit is 100% acceptable. And, and I, I really started recognizing that for myself, I had this fucked up, distorted version of what a man is. I, I told myself that a man has to be violent. The more violent I am, the more of a man I am. The more women I fuck, the more of a man I am. The more, the more money I got, the more of a man I am. The more emotionless I am, the more of a man I am. And I got caught up in this fucking whirlpool of just not feeling shit because it wasn't cool to feel shit. It wasn't cool to say I'm hurt. It was more cool to say I'm angry. It wasn't cool to say, damn, she hurt me. It was more cool to say, man, fuck that bitch. Instead of really honestly focusing on what the root causes of what my shit was, because again, the, my emotional intelligence was like zero. I, I, I didn't allow myself to feel that because it wasn't cool for me to feel that. I mean, what is emotional intelligence? The ability of being able to say, stop everything. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna revert to violence to express the simple fact that right about now, I'm very hurt that I don't know my dad. Yeah. Right about now, I'm very hurt that my mom left me with my grandmother to raise. Right about now, I'm very hurt that I feel like I'm not loved. So I'm, I'm, 
reverting or I'm, 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 I'm joining up with these group of individuals that feel the same way as me. They're my age, they're a little bit older, they're hella older, they lean back, they got big ass fucking pompadours and wearing tank tops, but you know what? Like, they're the definition of what I'm considering as a man because they're cool, they got the women, they got the money. Acceptance. They got the they're, acceptance. They're, they're accepting you for you. And, and, and 100%, that's exactly what happened. The moment I got jumped in, the moment that I'm chilling, the moment I'm like really honestly like doing everything that's not only being asked of me, but like it's being expected without even saying anything. Like, like fuck, it, it felt like I was a part of something for the first time in my life. It felt like I was a part of something and I really honestly believed it to the fullest. To the extent that I ended up um, being charged as an adult for three counts of attempted murder. And under Proposition 21, I was charged as an adult, I was tried as an adult, and then I was sentenced to an adult prison. How old were you? I was 16 years old. By the time I was, by the time I was sentenced, I was 17 going on 18. And, uh, I mean, do you mind speaking on the crime? Yeah, it was three counts of attempted murder. Three individuals uh, were shot. I, um, just out of respect to the fact that the individuals are alive, and uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not trying to get into heavy detail, but what I, don't, I, I mean, I'm not asking you either, brother. No, but yeah. what I what I will say though, what I will say is that, oh my God, like this shit happens every day, and it happened every day in my life, and. And for so long, I told myself, this is the shit that needs to happen. Not recognizing that a domino effect of back and forth is happening. Not recognizing or realizing that a lot of individuals that I grew up in that I cared about n are no longer breathing because of that. And these fools were the same age as me. They were like no different. They had the same, they were lacking the same fucking resource, the same, the same support, the same acceptance that, that I was fucking looking for in all the wrong places. But we were all convinced, we were literally the blind leading the blind because we were all convinced that we had the answer. And the answer was like, fuck everyone else. We got each other's back, there's strength in numbers, and we're not gonna revert from that. We're not gonna back down, even if it means dying for this shit. And at that point in time, I'm gonna be real with you, at that point in time in my life, I really didn't value myself to the extent of even wanting to question it. I mean, well, I mean, we all, there's always a root to our madness. Um, I mean, why did you end up going down that road, bro? You know, what, what led you into getting into, what, what neighborhood did you get into at the time? I got into East Side Longo, Barrio Viejo specifically, being one of the biggest cliques on the east side of Long Beach. We, but we were also the youngest clique. So there was a lot of individuals with ego and pride straight driving their life. And I went along with that because I felt like, man, I could do that too. I could emulate that. I could imitate that to the extent of creating my new self. And it's not handyman. It's not that. It's someone totally motherfucking different. Damn. And it empowered me. That's it, a powerful statement right no, there, but, bro. But, That's but, a, but it empowered me to the extent of feeling like I was a new person. And yeah, fuck I, yeah, I felt like I when I got man. in my hood, bro. Yeah. I felt like, you know what? I was just trying to escape the pain, homie. The, all the shit that I didn't like, homie. You know? And I found acceptance right here with these motherfucking animals, dog. You know what I mean? So you had to, you know, learn how to, you know, reform into these animals or two. I mean, it, you're already on your way, but... If, Go oh, ahead, yeah, brother. But more than anything else, it's like, there was, I never saw anything else beyond that shit. There was no UCLA, USC. There was no motherfucking beyond a diploma if I even made it that fucking far. Like, there was no encouragement in that. The teachers of the schools that surrounded my neighborhood weren't motivated into going beyond any of that. It was honestly like the investment in a human being really wasn't there. But why was that, though? Back to my question, bro. I mean, why was that? Mom, pops, I mean. I would say it, it was, it was, it was a, man, it was, I would say it was a stack up of all of that. I didn't know, I never met my dad. I, I don't even say I'm half Salvadorian, but I'm half Salvadorian because of my dad. Yeah. The reason why I don't say I'm half Salvadorian is because I don't know not one motherfucker in my family that's related to me that's Salvadorian. 
uh, in, in much respect to Salvadorian food, but I'm not uh, that. That's not my my taste buds. Don't go that route. And 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 I would say that of course there's a lot of resentment towards my father. Of course there's a lot of resentment towards a dude that I don't know. And every now and then I question like, damn, why didn't that motherfucker want to get to know me? But uh, uh, along with like my mom's just being so busy with like working and working and then just finally deciding, you know what, I can't, I can't take it, I can't take care of them. All of that shit really honestly led me to like, fuck it, man, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna fucking go with another family then. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with another group of individuals that I feel respect me. And of course, I was a teenager, I didn't know any better. As so as adults, people that really cared about me and told me like, man, you're gonna end up dead or end up doing life in prison. I really didn't want to hear that shit. It was, it was more important for me to focus on the individuals that I was chilling with and their opinion of me than the opinion of the people that really gave a fuck about me. I was trying to get with the program of what the people that care, cared about you at the time. 100%. And I remember the day, I remember the day that I got sentenced. And I was sentenced, uh, I remember the judge saying for count one of 664-187 was sentenced you to 15 in life. And he added, he tacked on a gang allegation to that, making it 25 to life. And I remember him saying for count two of 664-187, and then tacking on the same gang allegation, making it 25 to life, running it consecutive with count one. And then, and then for count three, saying uh, 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 15 to life, uh, plus an additional, uh, uh, and then get right off the charge of with the gang allegation and get me another 25 to life running consecutive with count one and two. And I'm like, I'm looking at my fucking attorney and I'm like, what the fuck does this mean? Was it a public defender or an attorney? No, it was, it was a paid attorney. But my mom spent, my mom was saving up money for a house and she had 30,000 saved up. And, and, and she used half of that money in hopes that she could get in, but my mom didn't know. For, for an attempt to murder times, ten, uh, times three, she didn't know that 15,000 really wasn't gonna do shit other than get a shark lawyer that was gonna take her for her money and at the end of the day, not really do much for me. Um, I, you know what, real quick. They call us monsters. That Netflix special. That one dude had a DUI fucking attorney, dog. I seen that you, uh, Caesar made me watch that shit, dog. Just real quick, bro. I do this sometimes and I apologize, dog. But he had a DUI attorney and she on camera, homie. Whoa. I hope she isn't practicing to this day. And I wish I had her name because I put that bitch on blast. You know what I mean? <laughs> Excuse my language. Um, but yeah, you know what I mean? Bro, yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's, some, there's shark attorneys out there, bro. There's some attorneys that are right now that are worried about more about Instagram posts than fucking taking care of their clients. You know what I mean? Because they're Instagram famous. Yeah. I don't want to mention no names. <laughs> <laughs> but to this day, I'll always remember what my attorney said to me. Because I, 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 remember, I remember as I was sentenced, he went to the back to the cell that I was at. And he was like, are you all right? I was like, what does that mean? And he goes, you're going to be all right. I go, no, no, no. But what did they sentence me to? And he was like, they sentenced you to three consecutive life sentences. And I go, what does that mean? And he was like, that means that we're gonna appeal. I go, no, 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 but what the fuck does this mean? Cause I, I, couldn't, I couldn't grasp, I couldn't grasp this idea of like, that's it for you. How many like, years was that altogether? Altogether it was 75 to life. 75 years. To life to life. Wasn't old enough to buy a fucking pack of cigarettes, wasn't old enough to vote, wasn't even old enough to enlist, surprisingly, but I was sure as fuck old enough to be sent to a motherfucking prison for the rest of my motherfucking life. 75 years, bro. I mean, at, at that point in time, had you ever been with a woman, a female? Yeah, I actually, okay. my, my, my- So you didn't go in there a virgin, that's a good thing. No, 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 my, <laughs> my son's mom. Some people go in there virgins and they're like, all right, yeah, well, nah, nah, I don't nah. know what year I'm gonna get my virginity <laughs> popped in there, but it's gonna be hopefully Caesar. soon. <laughs> no, I'm just but, uh, No, but on some real shit, uh, no, my, my son's mom was pregnant by my son and he was born around my, uh, my child. Wow. And I really, uh, you know, that's another story. Yeah. But I, I, I will say that my attorney, he said, I looked at him and I was I was so hurt, but at the same time I wanted to muster up the courage to be mad. And I told that fool, I was like, I was like, man, if I was a millionaire, I wouldn't be in this fucked up position with a truck ass lawyer like you. Let's and go. he looked at me and he was like, you know what? You're right. He goes, next time commit a crime you could afford. Oh shit. 
And I was like, fuck. <laughs> he walked out. He walked out. And oh, I'm, that was his clapback. He, Fuck he, you, bitch. What's he, his name, dog? Bradford Henschel. They fucking Fuck you, that. homie. Bradford Fuck Henschel. Bradford Don't Henschel. ever get that motherfucker, dog. Is he no, still he, practicing? No, he's not practicing. What is he doing now? Because whatever sure. he's doing, we're going to fucking say, fuck, don't go there. <laughs> he's working at Whole Foods. Don't go to that Whole Foods no more. We're banning everything that dude got a part of now. No, but but what, what, what really became clear is that this fool was right. Like, I, I, I didn't know this. I didn't acknowledge this at the moment because my, my mentality was was surrounded and limited to a motherfucking block and three letters. Like, it, it didn't go beyond that. So when, when, when I walked into a courtroom where they're yelling out penal codes, where they're talking about shit that I don't understand, I was lost. And I was depending on this motherfucker who got paid 15 grand to, to interpret that shit and at the same time represent me to the best of his ability. Whether he did or not, I'm not, I don't know. But all I know is that shit went to shit. And I will say this, that was a learning experience for me. That's a hard learning oh experience my God. right there, dog. God damn it, dog. Sometimes, dog, you wonder what fucking, what's, what's on the exterior of motherfucking man, dog. And this dude is telling you right now what's on the exterior of him. That's a fucking learning experience from fucking hell, bro. But sometimes people think of it as a learning experience from heaven. Depends on, you know, what part of the point in the chapter you get. And, 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 I, and I, like, I like that you put it that way. Because at that point in time, I remember he, um, this was before trial. He said, no matter what happens, I want you to know that everything happens for a reason. And I'm like, this is not a time to kick some philosophy. I'm not trying to hear that Homie, shit. Homie, you a lawyer, not a therapist. Homie, or a counselor. Like, he just said, hey, dog, go but, ahead, dog. But what I will say, though, is that, man, I spent 18 and a half years in prison. And, and I'm going to be honest with you. I grew up in that motherfucker. Like, homies taught me how to shave. My pubes grew out in prison <laughs> like and i'm gonna be i'm gonna I, the reason why i'm so vivid with what the fuck happened is because at the same time i also normalized getting naked in front of men and showering with them as, I a, was, as a child I, i'm talking about i was swapping shower heads as as their soapy water splashed on me and i scrubbed myself like i tapped them on the shoulder and let them know i'm ready to rinse off I fucking normalize bending over, squatting and coughing and holding my cheeks open. If you would have told me the day I got jumped in full in a few years, your ass is going to be keystring drugs just to feel like you're bringing some money in. I would have been like, you're fucking crazy. And then I remember the day I learned what the fuck hoop meant. I was like, what the fuck? We're on lockdown. We're not going to play basketball. And I'm like, fuck, man. This is the part that they didn't tell me, man. This is the okie doke, fool. This is the part where I allow individuals to really honestly run my life. And I don't even know how the fuck this shit started. And I really honestly felt more powerless than ever before in my life. This whole idea of empowerment, this whole idea of acceptance, this whole idea of a larger family, this whole idea of like, fool, we're doing it for the block. That shit was not for the block once I got busted. That shit was for a gang of dudes that I'm like, I don't even like you. But and then I realized, I do. I do like you. you. I, st I started getting to know people for who they really are. I started to really understand something and I really, I really honestly started getting in tune as to what was for me. And keep in mind, this shit took a good decade. For a good decade, I was just a yard bum doing really not, not much. For a good decade, I was that individual that was just like, I really did glamorize the fucking fake ass war stories that motherfuckers say left and right in the yard for a good moment. And then it, and then it got old. And then I started getting old. And then I started really honestly falling on the weight of like, damn man, I'm really never gonna get out this motherfucker. And if I do, I'm gonna be one old ass dude. I'm going to be one old ass dude. I started going to school. A, a buddy of mine was like, man, fool, just take some college courses. You never know, man. You're a bright motherfucker. Like, you're smart. And I'm like, fool, that's not really for me. And then apart from that, even if I go, like, where's that going to go? Like, what am I going to do with the sorry ass piece of paper? Yeah, what am I going to do with a resume in prison? Like, I'm not going to go nowhere. 
Yeah, I like can still the, get a kitchen job. The motherfucking governor himself was saying that I was going to leave in a casket, in a fucking pine box. They told you that. Well, he told everybody, a grave Davis told everybody that on NBC, CBS, all, all the fucking, but more than anything else, like for some reason I hung on the hope. And I want to say that that hope really honestly leaned on the remembrance of my grandma who raised me. Like whenever I thought of someone that really wholeheartedly, unconditionally like loved me, I always thought of my grandma. And I always thought about this kid that was growing up as the years went on, my son, who I had never spent beyond like four hours in a visiting room, didn't spend more than that. And I would see him like every three years or five years, depending on, on how shit was going down because my mom ended up moving out of all places, my mom ended up moving to Tulsa, Oklahoma, to a red ass racist state just to get away from Proposition 21 because she didn't want any of her other kids to to life in prison. Wow. And um, it wasn't easy, my boy. It wasn't easy, but I will say that everything that I've experienced in life has led me to where I'm at right now. Like straight up. And we'll get to that too. We'll get to that. I mean, Being stuck on a motherfucking cage will get old. You know what I mean? And it gets older quicker for some than others, right? And so when you came to your point, being a yard bum, you said it took a cool like 10 years, homie, if, if I'm correctly uh, saying the time, bro. Um, but shit got old. So when shit gets old, what are we doing now? I mean, are we studying? We're going to school now. I mean, I mean, where do you want to go from your story from there? I'm sorry, brother. So more than anything else, what I started doing is I started questioning my life. I started questioning, like, what the fuck am I really? If this is the only life I'm going to live, like, is this really it? Like, is this really it? Am I going to die in prison? Am I going to kick it with old ass fools that talk about how they used to give pork chops and cinnamon rolls that spill off the fucking tray? Like, I didn't want that for me. You were, big, you were bigger than that. Yeah, I, I, and, and no judgment to the individuals that get comfort in that, but what I'm getting at is I didn't want that for me. And, and, and my son really honestly motivated me in the sense of, like, if I'm going to die in prison, I'm going to die doing my best to either getting out or to at the very least having my son know, like, man, my dad gave it his all. Like he really honestly gave it his all to get out. So you you were you kept in contact with your son the whole time? Well, I tried as much as I could. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, my uh, the my relationship with my son's mom is strained to say the least. Absolutely. And, I mean any any relationship in those circumstances would be, bro. I mean, she was a child, you were a child, you had a baby. I mean, she was I mean, we we, we talk about the the the, the maturity the the full development of one man's one kid's brain at that age, you know what I mean, and it's still fucking developing, you know what I mean? You know the shit that that I've done, and that I've done back then, bro, and I'll do now. Like, no how, no way does it even make sense in the brain that I have now, which is hopefully, you know, getting close to full development. You know, every day's a <laughs> <laughs> every day's a, a, a process. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, that makes sense. Any relationship is gonna be, it's gonna be strained, bro. That's hard, bro. You know, and so, you know, you did what you can do and keep in touch with your son, but he did give you inspiration to pick yourself up in there and, you know, reach for something bigger than, which is the yard, right? 100%, and it, more than anything else, what really honestly started coming to mind was like, what, what, uh, what about myself gave me the right to actually like not give a fuck and harm other people in the process? And the reason why I started thinking about that was because I ran out of people to blame. I used to blame my dad, my mom. I used to blame everybody, the neighborhood motherfuckers that were like bullying my, 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 my baby's mom. Like I used, to bo I used to fucking blame everyone about like my situation and my circumstances and the way I was feeling about life. But I recognized and realized that I was fucking overexerting my energy on shit that really wasn't doing anything for me. And I really started focusing on like, man, what, what about me? Like led me to this point. 
And, and, and that's when I go back to really honestly recognizing that it was this distorted definition of what a man was. And I was on the hamster wheel trying my best to always prove myself to any and everyone, even a stranger, just a word. Just the word that's being said to me, I'm willing to go all out. Fuck it. We're about to do life right now. You just call me this. Fuck that. I am not that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to prove to you that I'm not. And immediately, I was willing to give any and everything that I said that was most important to me and throw that shit out the window. And I, 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 I didn't really... I didn't really comprehend exactly how ego and pride led me so far deep in the shit to where I couldn't even get out. And, and that's when we started, me and a couple of other friends, uh, um, we got together and we really started writing serious curriculum on, on not only toxic masculinity, but on like what is that led us to this? Like what is it that's most important to you? How true are you living to what's most important to you? What are the goals that you want to accomplish before you die? Who are the people that are most important in your life? How are you living true to what you say is most important? And without shaming or blaming, like really honestly focusing on the essence of what you say is most important and how your choices are aligning to that. Honestly, in the beginning of it, it was just one of those things where I was just doing it just to honestly feel better about myself. Just to feel like I'm having some positive shit. Just to feel like, man, I'm finally doing something good. I'm, fi I'm finally doing something that people could look at. People, when I say people, I mean my son, my mom. I'm finally doing something where they could look at it and be proud of me and say like, man, you see the little motherfucker wasn't a fuck up all the way through. I didn't think that it was gonna lead into a point where CNN did a documentary on us and they were gonna follow us. I didn't think it was gonna lead to a point where, by that time, I was I was connected with Scott Budnick since 2009 before ARC, and I didn't think that it was gonna lead to me and him connecting and, and my name being given to the governor. At that time, the governor was Jerry Brown, and the governor, like, granting my clemency, granting commutation, Making it to where my 128 said 2075, my earliest estimated parole date, to immediately. Release. No, not release. Go to board. Okay. So I went to board in 2018. I was found suitable uh, two days before my birthday. I was found suitable April 10th. Uh, and April 10th, 2018. And it was just. Fuck, man, that shit, that shit was so incredible. My, my grandmother passed away in 2012. My grandmother was my mom. And um, I honestly felt her vibe. Like, I felt, my grandmother used to, she, she used to, like, bounce me around as a kid and dance around with me. And I honestly felt her vibe. Like, damn, like, you mean to tell me this shit is finally going to be over? Like, they just said I was found suitable. Like, it's as easy as that, right? And she was like, yeah, they just granted you parole. And... 75 days later, I was out. At that point in time, 75 days later was like unheard of. You had to wait a lot longer than 75 days to get the fuck out. But 75 days later, I was out. And the world fucking changed. It was more crowded. It, 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 it was more rowdy in the sense, not rowdy in the sense of 90s shit rowdy, but it was just more congested. It was faster. Shit, Tupac used to brag about having a mobile phone, and, and now that I got out and a fucking 11 year old just swiping away. A fucking infant is just swiping away. But more importantly, like, I really started recognizing, like, damn, the world is so big. I'm so used to saying, what a small world, because I'm running into a fool that I knew in Salinas or in Centinella, and I'm saying, damn, what a small world, what a small world, because we're in the world of CDCR. But I didn't realize like everything I was missing out on. And more importantly, I felt so small. I mean, I feel small every day of the week, but I really, really felt small. A motherfucker was like really small and I didn't feel I had a place. I remember I used to help individuals uh, uh, write out a resume. I had a laptop, I wrote out their resume. I got you my boy resume right here, templates. That's right, what are we gonna do? We're gonna, we're gonna go to these motherfucking construction sites, we're gonna get this job. We'd go in like six deep. I would even coach them up on their fucking interview and two different rounds, everybody got the job but me. I'm the motherfucker that wrote the resume. I'm the one that helped them out with the interview. And, and, and the main reason why I didn't get the job is because I was very forthcoming about my condition. 
And I started really honestly feeling, I started feeling like I was feeling when I was seven years old again. I started feeling like handyman was coming back because I just decided, okay, I'm not this dude no more. I'm myself. And I'm like, fuck, man, this shit is taking me back on a U-turn. And I remember talking to my brother, Mike, and I'm like, damn, Mike. I mean, I just got out of the Metro. Uh, the, the, the dudes are all like, the Metro was like hella stinky, like heavy. And I'm like buying people's tokens because I'm like, fuck, fool, I got, this shit's expensive right here, this Metro shit. And I'm, I'm like walking out, going down Hollywood Boulevard because I, I stayed on Hollywood reentry on, on, uh, on Vine and I can't remember what the, Franklin and Vine, on the corner of Franklin and Vine. And I'm like walking up the motherfucking hill and I'm like, damn, fool, I don't feel special at all. A motherfucker felt like a superstar in prison. Everybody was talking about like, man, you're gonna make it, fool. You're gonna make it. Oh, you're getting out. Yeah, we knew you were gonna get out. And I'm like, I don't feel like a fucking superstar, dog. I just saw some shit happen between, between two unhoused individuals in the fucking metro. And I'm just trying to make it to this transitional house and I'm jogging up this steep ass hill because I'm gonna be two minutes late and they might fucking call my PO on it. And I, I really didn't feel free. And I was getting paid 11.50. I was working at Homeboy Industries, my boy, uh, Wicked. He was working there, head, head of security. I'm thinking to myself, man, I don't belong here. And he was like, come on, bro, you're just gonna give it. And I'm like, fuck it, you know I'm a bro. And I learned a lot from that spot. But more importantly, they connected me. They connected me with a whole different world. I was able to actually work uh, as, um, uh, what was it, uh, local government relations. And they were like, fool, you got a way of speaking. We want you to speak to the, to the city, uh, to city hall and, you know, get them to really know us and, and fund us in different projects and shit. And I'm like, I'm down with it. So I went to Chicago. I went to UC Davis. I went to Pepperdine. They had me like USC, UCLA. And for a minute there, a motherfucker felt like he was getting pimped. But, <laughs> but, cause, cause, but let's be honest, man. Yeah. People tokenize your fucking story, man. People will fucking commodify the whole, oh, the homie, the homeboy. And then they realize the motherfucker ain't talking the way Hollywood has us talking. Like, oh, uh, like, nah, motherfucker, that's not how I talk. And most of the individuals that I know don't talk like that. Hell no, like, we we're intelligent dog. people. Come on, baby. But I, I, I didn't look at it. I, I try not to focus too much on the six figures that were being made upstairs and, and the 1150 that was being made downstairs. I'm more focused on the opportunities and the network. And I understood a very long ago that it's not what you know, it's who you know. And I started really honestly getting connected with people. And I started understanding what the shit was about. Then I had the opportunity to give an award to Governor Jerry Brown. Um, through Homeboy Industries, and when I did that, I remember two millionaires came up to me and they were like, hey, how they were like, how much do you get paid? And I told them. And they were like, I wanna hire you. One of them was like, I wanna hire you. He was like, how much would you like to get paid? Shit, at that point in time, I had six, I had three months left on the transitional house and I was making 11.50, and I knew for a fact that I wasn't making enough to make it in Southern California. Fuck no. Just just on livable means alone, just on talking to a tia to fucking rent like a fucking room. That shit wasn't cracking. I wasn't making enough. Yeah, I mean a room, five hundred, eight hundred dollars a month. Yeah. So I started rationalizing with myself, and I was like, he just said, "How much would I like to make?" I was like, 18.50. A week. No, 1850 an hour. Cause I was looking okay. at my I was used to looking at my life by the hour. Okay. I was used to like shit, as long as I'm not making eleven fifty. Yeah. I mean I would have doubled it. So I didn't know that no 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 one hundred uh, one hundred I know that now. I didn't know that then. But what what I do know is he looked at me and he smiled. And he said, Life is gonna pay you what you think you're worth. Ooh. And I'm like, what the fuck? I felt like he was declining his deal. I'm like, wait a minute, $20. <laughs> but what it really was is he was teaching me that straight up value your life. Value the hours in the day. Value what you've been through. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that adds value. 
because that that adds character and it adds a lot of other things that a person at your age at the time has not a quarter of, bro. Right? You have heart. You have this. You have that. I mean, you can you can when 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 the shit's down, bro. You know how to pick yourself up out of that motherfucking mud, that darkness. You know what I mean? It, it's uh, so many different things that are involved with an individual that has done 18 years, starting at 16 years old, bro. You know, um, it, you, you, the, the resume could be potentially deep and be like, well, hold on, this isn't the regular resume that we get. You know what I mean? You know, I know how to sharpen a fierro. I know how to, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying though, bro, right? Like, you know what I mean? It's different. So you, you, Go ahead, bro. I'm sorry. So, one hundred percent, you're right. And 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 the trippy part about that, it's different, is that for a long time I told myself when I get out, if I ever get out, keep in mind that shit was a fantasy. I used to tell myself, I'm gonna fucking forget all of this shit ever happened. I'm gonna forget everybody in here. I'm gonna fucking leave this behind. I don't ever want to think about it. I don't ever want to be associated to it. They were like, "What about Long Beach?" I was like, "I don't ever want to go back to that sorry ass city that gave me triple life." And then. The weirdest thing happened. The shit that I realized was that my heart was telling me, like, like, what about the fools that are still in there? Like, what about the motherfuckers that are still busted doing time? The real individuals. Keep in mind, I grew up in prison. And when I say grew up, every sense of the word grew up. So I, I felt compelled to go back, my boy. I felt compelled to go back. And if, if prison was like a fucking ocean... And everybody's just floating, waiting to not get tired and drown. Like, and figuring out a way to go back to shore. And every now and then you see a motherfucker make it. Every now and then you see from afar, like, damn, that fool made it. it that fool made it. So I just decided, fuck it. I'm going to go back in there and I'm going to help individuals come back out. Let's go, homie. Let's motherfucking go, baby. That's what I'm talking about, dog. Who I love that right there, dog. If the ocean, say that again, bro. If the ocean was a, a ocean of, how did you say it? Of individuals just if, waiting to drown, if bro. If prison, if prison was like a fucking ocean from the beach, so I'm gonna use that in, as an analogy. Even though our beach is kind of dirty, I'm gonna still say it with pride. You know? <laughs> if if the ocean, if prison was like the ocean and the individuals in prison are just floating, waiting for the waves to throw them in, waiting for the laws to change. And if somehow, some way I figured out a way out, like, fuck that, man. It's my responsibility to go back in that ocean and show motherfuckers how to get out. <sighs> Let's go, and it's not that I'm a teacher, because everything I know, I learned from individuals in there. But it's, it's just that more than anything else, I feel like I was given an opportunity to be effective. I wasn't given an opportunity that in any platform I may stand on, whether it be this one, I'm not standing right now, by the way, I'm sitting down. But any, any platform that, that I stand on, like I represent those individuals. I represent my people. I represent my brothers in blue. I represent the individuals doing time. I represent the individuals that are hella loyal, are hella intelligent, and just happen to be stuck in the system right about now. A system that, by the way, isn't really working out. A system that will, will somehow, some way, just really honestly pinpointing on certain individuals. And to be real with you, I just strongly believe that resources really won't hand it out. They, they, that's, that's, the, that's the main reason why you could get a kid that was born on the same day as a homie and you'll realize real quick that that, that that white kid went in a totally different direction and the homie went in a totally different direction. And it's not to say that we don't have anomalies. It's not to say that every now and then the neighbor across the way went to USC and now we want to brag about well, why did she make it? Nah, motherfucker, why can't we focus on the 75% that didn't make it? Yeah. Like, and, 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 and honestly, like as an open abolitionist, being an individual that really honestly doesn't believe in fucking incarcerating people, but actually helping individuals heal from their unprocessed trauma, like from their unprocessed grief, from the moments that fucking judges don't want to hold into account like i stand for it i stand so for it that i was able to not only get out i was not only able to be a part of an organization that i helped create by us for us with individuals inside but now we're able to make a sustainable wage a livable wage i'm not gonna put my numbers out there but i'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna hit hawaii next month shit let's you know go I mean? baby shit that ain't cheap shit I'm a, I'm a, I, I tell my kids Santa Monica Beach is Hawaii right now. 
<laughs> They're like, it's dirty right here. There's all kinds of go ahead. But uh, apart from that, man, I've been I've been I've been blessed, bro, because my family moved to Tulsa, Oklahoma, as I mentioned earlier. And, and, and shout out to all the homies watching this, man. I appreciate the support. Help out the homie, cause on some real shit. Not that not not that the homie isn't already doing it, but on some real shit, it's very rare that individuals can actually create a platform where people could really honestly express themselves in a real way. So thank you very much, bro. Thank you. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe, baby. Let them know we real hit real shit. Hit that subscribe. But um, we get a glass of wine, dog, please. My 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 friend my my family out here. When I run into them, when I talk to them, they remind me of, you better not go back to prison. You better not go back to prison. But when I talk to my friends who have become family, they don't talk to me like that. They know what the fuck I'm doing. My, the, the, my, my best friends are lifers. The majority of my family now are lifers. The majority of my family consists of like 16 individuals in a pad with their women and we're all just family rocking it. We're all just honestly feeling for each other. We're even sipping, shot o'clock, shot o'clock. But we're doing it, but, <laughs> shit out. We're, but we're doing it in such a positive way that it's, we won't even let each other drive drunk. That's how, that's how positive this shit is. Speaking of drunk, would you like a glass of wine, sir? <laughs> Would you like a glass of wine? I'll take a glass of wine. Get him a glass of wine. I don't wine, even man. normally sip wine, but I'll, I'll, I'll go That's ahead. Good, bro. It's class. a special occasion. We it's class. special. We're classy around here. Yeah, just open up a, a, a bottle of the red wine, not the, not the cheap shit. Uh, that uh, roulette oh, printing brought. <laughs> the Nick brought. No, don't don't pour him that. Pour him some good stuff. You know what I mean? Hey, yeah. bro, but but I will say I'm thankful. And you know, earlier you mentioned like, man, you know, for some people they would say like, fuck that. I'm not trying to hear that. And for some other people they would say like, man, that was the best thing that ever happened to them. Like one, I wouldn't recommend prison to anybody. Open that up for. Open that up, please. You need the you need the cork thing. I'm, I apologize. Yeah, you got to put that cork thing in it. I wouldn't recommend prison to anybody, especially doing that shit in a way where you don't know when the fuck you're gonna get out of it. But but look what happened to you, bro. You writing but, resumes for everybody. I mean, god <laughs> damn it, dog. That was a good university you went to, dog. I mean, I wanna know what prison you went to. So next time anyone goes to prison, be like, try to get there. I was no, out. I'm stupid. <laughs> stupid joke. But I, I I will say that it was it was it was a cool ass prison where where individuals that were all lifers or not, or doing a gang of time were um were given the opportunity to honestly sit down with themselves. And it was a trip the way it happened. It was a trip the way at that very moment, thank you. At that very moment, individuals were really honestly getting into the groove of some positive shit. Yeah. And we were still doing criminal shit, like, like, like figuring out how to get Costco shit inside the prison. Yeah. So we would do food sales and we would have pizza every fucking week. We would have jobs. We would, we would create shit, but then we would give the money to charities in the streets. We would give the money that was raised to charities around the neighbor, around the communities of the prison. And it really, it really honestly prepared me for, for life today. Today, uh, like I said before, like not only is our, uh, our um, organization Success Stories program fully funded, but Shit, for those that, that want to know more about it, go to successstories.org, uh, successstoriesprogram.org. And it's, again, it's a program created by us and for us. But what I'm getting at is we're able to actually do what we love to do. And don't get me wrong, my boy, there are moments where I'm like, man, fuck driving to this desert. Fuck driving to these spots that I promised myself I would never come back to. But and then I'm reminded of the individuals that are inside. So, so two questions. Two questions I got for you. First... The dude that gave you the proposition of saying, hey, we'd like to hire you. How much are you worth? How much would you like to get paid? What happened with that? And then also, too, how did we end up getting being able to get access to get back into the prisons? So, uh, man, his, his name's Taylor Adams and uh, wealthy dude. And I, I mean, I'm not I, I really want to say the number, but I feel like the number really ain't like. It's damn near not half of what, it, like, well, it's a little more than half of what I'm making, but he offered, he was like, you know what, I'll start you off at 55. 55 an hour. Let's go, baby. No, I wish it was 55 an hour. He said, I'll start you at 55 a year. 55 a year. Hey, that's still good getting out the penitentiary, but, but, dog. But, but, Some no, folks no, no, make... but, but, but watch, trip, trip, trip. But this is what he said. This let me retract that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let me retract that. No, but this is what he said, though. But he was like, but just know you're not getting paid an hourly wage. You're getting paid by the tasks you do and the quality that you do those tasks. Salary. 
Yeah, no, it, it, but I started understanding what the fuck. I'm like, what the fuck is salary? I thought he was saying, you know, I thought he was saying. You thought salary. it was like celery, yeah. yeah you were like, yeah. you were like, all right, let me get some ranch with that. Yeah, <laughs> and some but, wings. <laughs> no, but what I really started recognizing is that there's an importance in being able to recognize that every hour of your day is important, even if it means you just chilling. And um, I really started understanding what salary meant, and I really honestly started valuing my time more. And I started valuing life in a different way. And instead of feeling like, and don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm always on the grind and I'm always on the hustle and I'm always getting side hustles left and right, speaking engagements. <laughs> but Obviously. What, but, but, but what I'm getting at is more than anything else, um, being able to really honestly enjoy what I once used to fantasize about. And the beautiful part about it is I get to do it with the people I was doing time with. I get to do it with individuals from all over LA County or all over California. And these are solid dudes that I know for a fact are kind hearted. It no longer am I labeling solid by, oh yeah, that motherfucker will, will fuck that dude up or that dude will just unload. No, I'm labeling dudes by their purity of like their genuine self. Like their genuine, like meeting somebody and feeling so like, man, my boy, I, I really like you. Like real shit, like something about you, I really like you. Like really getting to meet people for their true self. And oh my God, my, my friends have become a family, my boy. Like my, my, my life of friends have become those individuals that I lean on in moments of struggle. In moments, man, they help my, my son get work. I got a 20 year old boy, that boy I was describing you earlier, the boy that I was describing, the boy that I didn't like really honestly spend much time with, like he lives with me now. Like. Let's go baby, let's go. Like real shit, since, since, I've been, since I've been out, I've been fortunate to be able to like not only travel the United States and speak in different universities, but I've also been able to be a part of like being in a documentary with PBS, that documentary was just released uh, two weeks ago, Road Trip Nation, being free. Like being able to travel the United States and really honestly like, like, like talk to individuals that either support or do not support the formerly incarcerated and really getting to, to explore, like not only the United States, but explore myself. Yeah, and the mind state of others. Real shit. I've, I've been able to speak in front of White House officials. I've been able to chill the, the day Gavin, and, and I, I will say this, fuck politics, but I understand politics in the sense of why they're needed. I understand why motherfuckers do that shit. I understand the game of it. And it, so I say fuck politics because fuck everything it comes with. But what I'm getting at is I also understand like the individuals and the powers that be. So when I was sitting right next to Gavin Newsom as he was being inaugurated, I was like, like, damn, fool, like, this is the next governor. Like, this motherfucker, besides the president, this fool has the power to release people. And I think of my brothers. I think of the individuals that I was in the pen with, and I'm, like, thinking, like, man, this dude has the power to say something, and it will happen. That's... And you're sitting next to this dude. And not in awe in the sense of, like, oh, my God. Like, it just in the sense of understanding, finally getting the fact that the people that create the policies that affect my people, that the people of color are motherfucking white. And for a long time, they've been putting individuals away for a very, very long time without really having any true solutions as to how to solve the problem. And I'm gonna tell you right now, my boy, 33 prisons it was at one point and crime had went down for a very long time. For a very long time, crime went down, and for a very long time, dudes were getting busted and getting a gang of time for some petty ass shit. And is that because crime went down? No, that's because people were making millions and billions of dollars off of people being incarcerated. Yeah, absolutely. And that's just facts. No, but I mean, but exactly. And so what you said is kind of the same thing that I said. So if crime's going down, let's, we, we need, if crime's going down, less dudes are coming into the system, then we need to give these dudes a longer sentence to maintain the, 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 the revenue from these prison systems and, and so on and so forth. And all the jobs that fucking come with fucking having convicts, inmates, dudes incarcerated, correct? 100%, okay. to, to the extent that after a while they start running out of numbers that they're like, man, fuck it, create some laws and have these juveniles get charged as adults because we need to throw these motherfuckers in there too. Even though, mind you, there's a completely different law that, that a juvenile falls under. They can't even refer to a cell at juvenile hall. They can't even refer to the, the, the room as a cell. They gotta refer to it as a room. 
There's certain laws, but at the same time, you'll go to a dope court from that same fucking facility. And, and the reason why I bring this up is recognizing and realizing all of this led me to the part where when I was invited to speak in front of White House officials and, and given the opportunity to really speak my mind, it was just a pleasure to being able to do that without watering it down. It was a pleasure to really honestly speak about what I feel is lacking. But most importantly, it was a pleasure to honestly represent like intelligent people from the block. Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby! Friday night, baby. We ain't coming with no motherfucking bullshit, dog. I told you it was gonna be a blockbuster motherfucking Friday night, dog. <laughs> we save, hey, they're all great, but sometimes we save the best for the last. And that's the end of the week right now, Friday night. Hit that like, subscribe. Slap your old lady right now, she acting stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so man, my boy, now, now what my life is, the trajectory that my life is going into now is, um, I was certified by Loyola Law School uh, as a forensic expert, specifically a gang expert. And What does I, that consist of? So I represent in juvenile court, whenever there's a juvenile, like, like about to get sent to YA or about to do a gang of time for gang-related offenses, I represent them and change the narrative. My goal is to go up in there and not talk about the crime that has taken place, but talk about the trauma that's taken place before that crime and what led that juvenile into even thinking about doing something like that. God damn it. Let's go. I love it, baby. I love it. Sprinkle us, doggy. Sprinkle yeah. us. So all uh, success stories uh, for any individual that, that attends and participates in success stories in prison gets time off. They get milestones, and for that, they get time off of their sentence. But most importantly, we want to believe, and we know for a fact, because so many individuals got out that are success stories alumni, is that they're able to actually empower themselves with the concept of what's most important to them instead of what other people are going to think. And that's not riddle talk of anything else other than just living your life to the best of your ability. And I, I, I strongly believe that every individual has the right to live the life the way, the way they want to live it instead of being pressured to live it in the way that other people want to live it. And and I, I feel that many times we're not given the space to to really allow ourselves to be that way, to really be ourselves. Amen to that, dog. Amen to that. So how did you end up getting back into the system, bro? Taking it back a little bit. You talked about going in the system, being able to help out, you know, your brothers, sisters, right? Um, I mean, how were you able, what program that puts you back into the system that you're involved in? So Success Stories program um, was a program that, that was not only recognized by the Senate, but was recognized by different politicians all throughout the state of California. And this was while we were in prison. They were recognizing that, that, that the conversation was different. Like we were not only talking about, we were not only talking about like what's most important to you. We were also talking about the essence of why individuals keep going through a revolving door of having to constantly go back into prison or put themselves in positions where they did something that they regret or they did something that they, they're so ashamed of that they'll say, that wasn't me at that time. Or they'll, they'll did, they did something where they're just like, damn, I blacked out. Yeah, or they're like, gonna dope the fuck up. Regardless woke of- Woke up sober in the county jail. Yeah, and so, so the next question is like, well, what's most important to you though? And it, it, most people, nobody says my homies, my neighborhood, my dr the drugs, the alcohol, nobody says that shit. Everybody really honestly gets to the essence of shit and, and starts talking about either who's most important to them or what's most important to them. And it's in those moments that we're able to actually empower ourselves with a choice instead of giving ourselves this mentality that we don't have a choice. Absolutely. Like, like really honestly empowering ourselves with the ability of doing what we want to do. Even though we got to like make ends meet, even though we have responsibilities to meet. And um, my boy, it's just, it's, it's been life changing. I mean, since when you got out from 18 years, you said it was uh, 2018 you got out, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I mean, you. I think you just like, ah, just sitting here with you, bro, and hearing you speak, my boy. I mean, sh you got the gift of the gab, and you understand it, dog. And sometimes, in one's life, understanding takes longer than others, you know, to really just figure everything out, especially in a in a place like that, right? You know what I mean? And you thoroughly were able to do that. I mean, but getting out at in 2018, after 18 years, bro, what was 
it, it seems like some things were going to come a lot easier to you, but what things did you struggle with getting out after 18 years? Relationships, bro. Like um, the, my relationship with my grandmother passed away in 2012. My relationship with my mom is also strained to say the least. To this uh, day? To this day. Like we, we, we're we about to go to Hawaii together. I'm about to take her for her birthday. But it, it doesn't change the fact that there's this background awkwardness of the relationship between my son and I. The relationship between my girl and I. Like I, I, I was raised to constantly question whether I should trust you or not. And I'm just waiting for the day, the moment that you prove to me that I shouldn't trust you anymore. And when you do that, when you do that shit in prison, that shit works because it's on some survival tip. And you're around individuals that 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 you don't know whether they're gonna be grimy or not until you gauge that. Where out here, like people start asking you, like, damn, how long do I have to prove myself until I gain the merit of being trusted? Like, are you just going to constantly, like, honestly believe that I'm going to do you scandalous? And then keep in mind, my son lives with me now. And and I'm, I'm going to say something right now. Like, I was 100% humbled by just going back to my city because I did go back to my city and I live in my city now. And, and, and to this very day, I don't say, like, ex-gang member in the ex-gang member way. I say, like, I, I go back into my communities and I just no longer come with the vibe or the tip of let's fuck this up. I now come with the vibe of like, man, let's let's lift this shit up and let's get some, let's get some jobs. Let's fucking let's really honestly build for our families and for the people that we care about. Like, it, it, it. preach, baby, preach. That, that that that's what really changed it for me, man. And some people call it growth. I, I I really just call it recognizing what my priorities are. And of course, again, some people call it growth, but for me, it's just really honestly knowing like what's most important to me. And what am I willing to do for what's most important, especially if I'm willing to do the, the extreme for shit that really ain't that important. But I'm gonna be real with you, that shit felt hella important at the time. As a 16 year old, as a 15 year old, as a 14 year old, like I honestly felt like that's all I got. And I'm, I'll never say or walk away from my past or my story because that's what I got. That's what brought me to the point of where I'm at today. So as where I used to say, man, I can't wait for the day I forget about this or walk away from this. I now utilize my experiences for the value that they have. And everything that I've been through, everything that I experienced has made me the person that I am today. Not just this ex-convict, ex-felon. Like, no, an intellectual individual that could express himself to the extent of being able to effectively show not only change within himself, but show that the system that's in play right now is not working. An individual that could coherently walk into mahogany desk offices and say something effectively to the extent of my people are not being represented in the way that they should. Like an individual that could honestly be effective enough to be able to help individuals get off from doing life in prison because this dude is just 17 years old. Now, mind you, they stopped that in L.A. County, but my boy, they're doing that in so many other counties in the state of California. All I'm saying is that if I was brought to this world with the purpose of really being able to be my whole self, my true self, and really honestly be able to reflect that on everyone else, like I'm going to stand for what I know. Nothing has really changed, but everything changed. Nothing has changed in the sense of I have love for the people that relay with me, for the people that look like me, for the people that I feel because they grew up like me. That hasn't changed. My perspective has changed in the sense of how I'm going to help my people out. My, my, when, when I look at this is my neighborhood, instead of fucking it up and writing on walls and doing something, I, like, like how, could, how could I empower this shit? Let's go, baby. Like, how could I, how could I like, remind individuals that really don't know how to say, man, fool, I'm not feeling loved right now, so I'm not really loving myself. Like, how could I empower them to say, like, my boy, much love. And it's okay to say, I love you. It's okay to say, I have love for you. And I mean that shit in a genuine way because I'm going to have my, your best, your best. Um, I'm going to have my best intentions, especially when it comes to what your best results are. Straight up. God damn it, dog. You're the one, huh? 
And I, I'm, I'm one of many, my boy. The That's one. the thing. I'm one of many, but many individuals are being ignored because cameras aren't on them. Many individuals are being ignored because they're in a room right now having something to say, but not the platform to say it. Like many individuals right now are feeling like, man, I could do that shit. And damn right, you could do that shit. But for some reason, they're not feeling encouraged or supported by the their surroundings. Because, it's, ah, there you go again with that sorry shit, fool. Look at that schoolboy motherfucker with his bags. Motherfucker, I traded in a bag full of books over a fucking folded up peachy that I would put in my back pocket. All because dudes were clowning me on loving to go to school and learn. Like, fuck, man, I could have been somebody, man. And not to say that I'm nobody right now, but all I'm saying is, fuck, I could have been somebody. But I'm not mad at them either because somebody taught them that shit. Somebody taught them that fucking education isn't important. Somebody taught them that ignorancy is better and not being able to utilize the vernacular to be able to fucking say something effectively and at the same time say something like, hell yeah, motherfucker, we're going to do this shit. We're going to get, we're going to have fun. It's all right. It's all right to be able to like chill. It's a right to be able to embrace the individuals, my friends that I grew up with from the block, from many blocks that look like my block. It's, it, it's, it's beautiful to be able to come together as one, as a collective and empower ourselves to do greater good for the individuals that are still in there trapped, held in captivity on some shit. You know what, dog? Let me say this, bro. I mean, you are a perfect description of an individual that I always, and we've had many to showcase on this podcast to say, hey, there's something beyond the mean mug, the bald head. And the reason for me starting this podcast, don't want to sound like a bre broken record, dog, but was to show off one's individual that looks like myself, their inner voice you know besides just the mean mug and not saying nothing i mean like you said bro i mean a lot of the homies we've been down some shit dog that was just like inevitable almost you know what i mean you know it, it is what it is and it happened and it have some for some people like yourself it happened so quick you know that you get swept away right away at 16 years old 75 years to fucking life dog you know what i mean but i always wanted to to show the world bro that hey, you know what? <laughs> we are powerful people with, yeah, struggles and flaws, you know what I mean? But we, we are valued and you should value. Like bro, 100% dog, I love everything you're saying right here, bro. I mean, you, you, you're, the, you're the fucking, what do they call it? The, 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 the something child, what do you call it? The poster child. The nah, poster child. That's Caesar right there, Of Hoodstocks, man. baby. You know what I mean? Like, this is yeah. why I started this podcast, dog, yeah. is to showcase the intellect of one individual with this fucking look that you might think something else. You might fucking lock your door real quick, dog, because this dude's just running out with some eggs and fucking chorizo, dog, you know what I mean, real quick, <laughs> and you're like, oh, shit, what the Like, nah, he's just trying to get those his car real quick, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, we, 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 we trying to, I'm trying to change the narrative, even though, you know, it, that's an uphill battle in some ways, dog, but I just wanted to share these stories of these faces, dog, you know what I mean? And this is why I started Hoodstocks, because I spent so many years in the penitentiary, so many years in the fucking dope houses, the streets, dog, with just people that were just like, bro, like you could really do something with yourself. You were probably one of them dudes, dog, and we were fucking up in a dope house or something, getting high, dog, <laughs> twisting the pookie, smoking a frio, fucking <laughs> blowing that bitch out because it just caught a big ass flame, you know what I mean? Shout out to State Street, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> I'm just fucking, hold on. Um, but I'm just saying, though, bro, like it's, uh, bro. <laughs> This, this is dope. You know what? Let's open it. Can we open up phone calls? For sure. Let's do some phone calls. I know we're not done with this interview yet, dog. But let's open up some phone calls. Uh, let's take a quick break, and we're going to go to phone calls right now. I'm going to take a leak real quick. Uh, we're going to phone call. Press, is this a good time to take a quick break? Yeah. Yeah, let's take a quick break, and we'll be right We'll be right back with phone calls, guys. Break All right? Break time. Break. Ready. Good 
can't lose me, I can't think I'm up all night, I can't sleep Oxycodons, I can't breathe Try and move my body free Have them run around the streets with a face mask yeah. I know what I wanna eat to make mad uh. Even worse, I'm a flirt with dead dance uh. Reach deeper and further in hell's man. Yeah. yeah, you talking what you ain't living, you walk past uh. Scum city, cheat dead, not average uh. Eyes bloodshot red, no sleep pass uh. Do we really need to make an example out uh. Creepy corners in my bed, fuck suck, cunt moves Russian roulette, got two in a revolver uh. On my John Wick shit, bipolar proctors uh. I'm sick with exposed evil doctors Devil is me, cause I ain't phased by pain no. We can do five or go twelve in a ring Come on. K.O. kill on sight, the Grim Reaper uh. Asshole don't come at me for my beef Fuck, lethal, street sweeper Keep creeping, I'm beefing with any motherfucker for no reason uh. This mean and my demons are ready for war with no grieving I won't stop till they get popped and stop speaking is eyes mouth covered, I stay true, don't wanna see nothing here, nothing speak about you I'm rude, heartless, the devil, it's true The devil's me, I can't think I'm up all night, I can't sleep Oxycontins, I can't breathe Try and move my body free The devil is me, it's me, it's me, it's me Oxycontins, I can't breathe The devil is me, it's me, it's me, it's me my creation, glass in my hand, I put the blood on the pavement, I'm ancient, past life, whole town, burn me to a cadence, swing it dead, I'm the hangman, open up the Bible, set the stone swarms all to the nation, LA County Tales, walk up book of Revelation, looking in the mirror, I see the back of my head, throw the devil at me faces, pretty one, how you gonna hate this, kneeling to the altar, Christ hangs from my neck, look at all the sweat, dripping off my skin, stepping off the body, you the shell of my sins, seductive sensation, she dances in wind, she calls me king, I said, who am I again? Be the beginning or the end, human life, you, you don't have to repent. The gate to all keepers, the serpent of evil, the virgin, the bleeders, hearts to all needles, the organs, the fetuses, leeches, they suck all your blood, seduction is incubus, your fire, he's water, the temper is harder, your sama bin Laden, our mama, you drama, spiritual views, I'm feeling these shoes, I have no feeling, I loosen the noose, I rise to my feet, full of carnage I reap, don't have to dig deep, I'm the butcher, you meet, there's blood on my horn, you hate how it feels, cause of me, you born, meeting the John, the devil's me, I can't be. I'm up all night, I can't sleep Oxycontins, I can't breathe Try and move my body free The devil is me, it's me, it's me, it's me Oxycontins, I can't breathe The devil is me, it's me, it's me, it's me Motherfucker Underground death rap Yeah Punk rock hip hop City with the best. <laughs> no ball luggage, Zazu. Who the fuck you thought it was? Try and catch our buzz. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, hood stocks, baby. Like, subscribe, we're coming back with phone calls right now. Show me move the ocean, show me who the coldest, show me all the heads of my enemies focus. Show me all the heads of my enemies focus. Your dialect is crazy, this overcast day, my cemetery shady, these powerful men, why you do them like that? You ain't even his kin, you ain't never spilled blood, you ain't never showed love, he the right hand man to the man above. The Lord, the mighty. The sword will fight you. Armor is still heartless. I kill. They're coming for your soul. Sweet talker, can you smell the pot of burning bones? Got your damn mind, take that monologue home. I take it, I give it. I'm a creature with limits. You a fisherman fishing. The power of pussy is not to continue. They sit and they sliver. They hiss when we enter. The lies and the truth, righteous, never confused. You powerless fool, I harpoon your cocoon. Power is me, coward souls, I set free. She cool, she smooth. The princess of the emperor, dog, she thinks she making moves. Hey, hey. A solid iron fist, that squad you got a week. 1945, feel good to be alive. I was standing on the mountain navigating warships. Roosevelt, my son, you're done with your mistress. Yeah. Done having fun. Check one, two, Church one, two. Your fat fuck. Let's Cover go, show baby. Together. Let's go. Hood stocks, baby. Hit that like, hit that subscribe. We got the phone calls popping off now. Um, bop, 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 bop. Yeah, we back, dog. We back, we back. A couple people called. Uh, go ahead and call in. And, um, bro, this has been... 
fucking amazing so far. Let's go. We got a phone call right here. It looks like it's from Norwalk. Um, let's go. You're on Hoodstocks. Talk to us. What's up, dog? This is uh, Travi from that Uptown with Oh, what up, Travi? That's right. What's up, hey, Travi? Hey, I just I, I got a question for this for for the man right here. Check it out, dog. Did you ever book that Charlie Rocampo back in the day? Did I ever book what? Charlie Rocampo. Charlie Rocampo. Rocampo. No, I didn't. You never listened to Chicano rap? Right? No, I, I did, but I listened to like uh, Little Cuete. I listened to like King G. I never listened to that. So you never heard of Charlie Rocampo? No. Okay, cool. I, I like the honesty, doggy. Um, well, hey, let me give a shout out, man, to Lux, and let me give it a shout out to all the Rasa out there struggling. I also want to give a shout out to the Union Carpenters, my boy, because uh, man, that was a blessing. I know uh, you were Union Electrician, Lucky. Still but am, baby. Uh, uh, everybody in the county jail, um, and uh. Everybody out there just in the struggle, man, because that struggle made me the man I am today, man. I never forget where I'm from. That's right. I thought uh, I'd be peace right. you. Hey, shout out to uh, Charlie that's Rocampo. Right. Uh, we love you, yeah, my boy. Rocampo, have a good, man. have a good weekend, baby. All right. Bueno noches, doggy. Yeah, buenos right. noches, doggy. Shout out Rascal from that weird about locals gang too. There you go, baby. All right, little. all right, doggy. Hey, let's go. You're on Hoodstocks. Talk to us. What up? What up? What up? It's your man, love from North Side Long Beach. North side Long Beach. Okay, okay. North side right, Long Beach. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Watch out, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's hey, good right. luck, you big fan, you know what I mean? That's Thank right, my boy. Thank Much you, love, my we boy. represented the Harbor area today. That's your real deal. You no, know, real stuff, man. Hey, big love, man. Long Beach all day, every day, you know what I mean? And I love seeing it. You know, I love seeing your, your podcast grow. And hopefully, you know what I mean? It is. Not hopefully, it is going to keep growing, you know what I mean? That's for sure. Man, That's we for do, sure. We're doing, we doing so beautiful right now, dog. Like, man, dog, the podcast, the subscribers, the views, dog. I mean, we doing half a million to a million a month, and that was a lot up more than we were doing before. Last month, we did 1.7 million views, dog, for sure, which for is sure. good for man, a small platform, going, baby. All I want to do is just show mad love. North Long Beach to the fullest. Long Beach, hey, love it, man. Love it, hey. Be lucky to keep doing your thing, man. Okay, hey, dog, do me a favor, yeah, dog? What up? Uh, tell your lady I'll call her later on tonight, all right? <laughs> what I want to say is, fuck you, Lucky, because I know you too, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too, baby. We gone. All right. <laughs> Motherfuckers, dog. You know what I mean? <laughs> shit, homie. It's crazy about the neighborhoods and shit, dog, because, um, you know, you know, I'm not going to even go there, dog. That's fucking bullshit, dog. Um, how you feeling? I'm feeling good. You're feeling good, dog. How, how's that wine right there, dog? That shit is smooth. That shit is good. It's smooth, like yourself, baby. That's right. <laughs> I mean, we do wine right here now, dog. I've been going to fucking uh, the little wine spots, dog, and just fucking just like, and I get the dude, dog, that that, that knows about the wines. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and so I, I don't go there blindly, dog. I'm just like, hold on, I need some help right yeah, here, dog. Yeah, you're going in with a plan. You're yeah, going in with the plan. Yeah, yeah, I need some help. And I get the little shopping cart. It's like a little mini shopping cart, dog. And I said, all right, dog, hey, homie, check it out. This is my budget, bro. This is what I like to fuck with. You know what I mean? I like, the, I like that Snoop Dogg 19 Crimes type of <laughs> shit, dog. Like $15 bottle, you know what I mean? But, you know, I'm willing to go a little bit higher. And so I had this one dude last time, dog, and he was like, all right, uh, come through, you know what I mean? And, and he was selling me everything. He goes, this right here. I fucked the shit out of my bitch with this one. I said, let me get three of those. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then he goes, this one right here, if you mix it with some cocaine, you know what I mean? It's going to get you like that. Let me get four of those. You know what I mean? I swear to God, dog, this dude was a, he was, and he even took me to a little, bro, I don't know what wine spot I go to to get <laughs> bottles of wine and shit. And then he took me to the spot, like a spot and he goes, <laughs> and he goes, let me, let me give you a little taste tester of this right here. And I was like, okay. I mean, and then he poured me a little ass, bitch ass cup. I said, come on, dog. I need a bigger taste mm -hmm. tester than that. You know what I mean? So he filled it up, pop. And I said, all right, let me get five of those. You know what I mean? And this dude, I, dude, I walked out, I walked out there, dog. And I had to put, I had to put the wine in boxes, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah, because I bought so many. Dog, yeah, and numbers. I really, I really went there to get like two or three. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. You know, balling on a budget, bro. But once they got me, they got me, dog. And I'm just like, homie, shit, homie, bam, dog. Let's get that paid and let's go. Um, so it's our new thing right here, dog. It makes a little hood with class, baby. I, I mean, like that. yeah, I like, that. I like wine. You love that weed, baby, or what? Look at that shit. That's from the fucking from the dank spot. 
How's that shit feel? I mean, uh, when it when it comes to like uh, uh, cannabis, do you prefer the uh, indica or the sativa? I used to say indica, but indica got me fucking laid out, my boy. I got shit to do. Like I, I can't, I can't just fucking blaze in the morning and then just nah, it's not gonna work out for me. So lately, I've been leaning on hybrids. But man, at night, I could, I could go for a good, cool ass uh, indica. Indica. I, I'm, I'm from, I'm from the era where chronic was chronic. Like they, they didn't have all these names for Is that shit, crazy, you know? Bro, what? How they have it now? It's crazy. It's crazy that it's legit. I'm gonna tell you right now. I got arrested going into a dispensary. My boy, I didn't even buy no weed. That's how paranoid I was. I had just got out. I was out for like six months. I went into a dispensary. I got cuffed up. Everybody got cuffed up. They got they, raided. They got raided because it was one of those fucking trap houses. <laughs> yeah, it was one of those bootleg spots. So trip, huh? trip, trip. My fucking uh, my uh, conditions of parole was a. Stay away from guns. B, stay away from drugs, specifically marijuana. And then C, stay away from gang members. That day when they raided that shit, the securities had guns. And there was like fucking pounds and pounds of weed. And then there was like four dudes that were like old school veteran fucking 50 pushing fucking 60 uh, gang members. I was fucked, my boy. They took me to the county for five days, made me feel like I was about to do five years. They didn't make me feel, that's what they told me. They said, you literally violated three of your most major conditions of parole. And because you're, 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 you're a lifer on parole, like we're strongly thinking about, 10 day flash was that, I'm like, I'm gonna get my 10 day flash, cause I already did five, I got five more to go. Like, hell no, they were talking about, well, you're going back, back. I would have been like, I thought it was a produce store, sir. I was going in to get salads, and I'm on this diet right no, now. No, you know what, man? I got good people. I got good people in my life, and they 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 know me for me, and they spoke up for me. And to be real with you, like more and more, I'm recognized. It's not what you know, who you know. Not to say, not to say. Hold on, homie. Hey, you with the badge, call this number right here, dog. Hey, dog, holler at him real quick. No, fuck no. Not you with the badge. No. It was it was my boy, my boy fucking Scott man, this fucking white, this white motherfucker loves homies. Like I got my burpees up right now, but homies, <laughs> trip the f- calm the ass down. No, no, on some real shit though, man. My boy really, honestly, like he backs, he he really backs up homies, and and he's not about second chances or third chances. He's just about like man, motherfucker, you're a human being. And if you were related to me, you'd be getting all the chances in the world. Just on the simple fact that you would be white, so why not? And that's lovely. But at the same time, I would like to build the structure and a format and a platform to where our people have it like that. And I want to believe that we do. My boy Caesar right here just moved up the ranks where he's working at in ARC. But along with that, there's a lot of people in Sacramento. When I used to go up to Sacramento... Um, there's a lot of people, a lot of homies that are in positions where they're really, honestly, genuinely fucking helping uh, uh, swing that pendulum in our favor. You know, bro, let's 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 get this phone call. He's called a couple of times, then I want to say something. Um, you're on the hood stocks. Talk to us. What up? It's Big Rudy from Long Beach. Long Beach in the house. What's up? That's right. What's, What's up? up? Long Beach in the house. What's up, my boy? How's hey. it going? Respect from the north side to the east side, homie. You know I mean? That's right. Much respect, my boy. Much love. Hey, you're doing good out there. Here, keep 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 your shit up, do you? Thank you. I appreciate that. And I just that's that's a perfect example of an individual that 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 knows what's important. You know what I mean? Like, I, thank you for that, my boy. But yeah, yeah no, I'm, thank I'm, you for I'm, calling. I'm, hey, hey, I'm my family from the east side. Homie, respect, dog. That's right. Much respect, my boy. Much uh, respect. Absolutely. You know what, dog? Check it out, dog. Thank you, bro, for calling in, bro. Um. One thing that's dope about these phone calls, bro, is that, you know what, dog? You don't got to be on this podcast talking about talking big and bad shit. Like, you know what's more attractive, dog? Positive shit, dog. Growth, dog. How we can pick ourselves up imagine out of this. Imagine that, huh? Yeah, imagine, imagine that. that, bro. The, the triumph of, like, making it out of this motherfucker. I mean, I think it's the era that we're in low-key, mm-hmm. dog. You know what I mean? I think it's the era that we're in, dog, because it's low, real shit, dog. It's about money now, dog. It's about empowering yourself, your family, creating generational fucking wealth, dog. You know what I mean? What the fuck is that? I never knew what the fuck that was, but that's something that I'm working on right now with this fucking podcast, dog. 
You know, it's about uplifting and positivity, dog. You know what, dog? Check it out. I can be that dude on this podcast. And some people, and sometimes some of the boys say, hey, look, why don't you speak on fucking uh, 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 shit that's going on right now? And I was like, you know what, dog? I don't need to speak on all that shit because that's not what we do right here, dog. We're not reporting the news. We're not doing fucking uh, uh, reaction videos, dog. I mean, we, we, we just got real dudes on here with real stories, dog. You know what I mean? And, and if you can take something from this man's life, his struggle and shit and, and, and implementing your life, whatever, if it needs to be implemented or if it's just a reminder of, hey, don't break the motherfucking law, dog, because the law don't fucking play. You know what I mean? Then then so be it, dog. But the message, dog, the message, you know what I mean, it is, is, is positivity and it's growth. It's uplifting than fucking the hood stocks, baby. You know, uplifting our value in fucking life as individuals because we, we are all stocks in the fucking hood, dog. And I pre- damn fuck, I love the way you flip bands. This dude just did that. So look, look, I, I, the, I appreciate you mentioning that because for a long time we didn't value ourselves to that extent. For a long time it was more cool to say, I don't give a fuck and I'm willing to die instead of saying, I give a fuck and I'm going to give it my all to be able to show these dudes that I could do it. I could do it in such an amazing way that it's going to pull my family. It doesn't even have to pull them out of there. Like, why can't we own the fucking apartment complex, my boy? Yeah. Like, why can't we own those motherfucking apartment complexes? Why does it gotta be some dude that you send a check to that you never even fucking met that's raising the rent every motherfucking year? Like, real, like real shit. Like, why can't it be us? Like, why, why is it that we'd rather rent than motherfucking own? And all I'm getting at is, this is a perfect example of how, like, we get to advance. And, and I, I know you mentioned earlier, like, man, maybe it's the times, you know, maybe it's the time. I feel like we always had it in us. I just feel like no one knew who to go first. Like, I feel like everybody always wanted something better than what they were getting. It, whether takes, it, be nuts. it takes nuts to make the positive decision in an environment like that. You know, you're stepping out the box. You're stepping out the norm, dog. You know what I mean? Like, it, honestly, homie, it takes nuts, dog, to do good when you come from this. Like, we talk about what nuts are and what having balls are, bro. Let's define that shit in 2022 of motherfucking August, dog. It takes nuts, dog, to get your punk ass up to work, dog, and fucking pay the fucking bills. It takes nuts, dog, to, to, you know what I mean, to feed your fucking kids, dog. Because I I, I did none of that for so many years, bro. Didn't take care of the kids, popping kids out from motherfucking hood rats, homie. Bop, bop, bop. Whoa, 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 dog. Acting like I'm the big dog on the block, but I wasn't shit, dog. I wasn't shit, dog. But in my head, I felt like I was a big man, but really, I wasn't a quarter of a fucking man, dog. Lucky you ain't shit. Thank you, K9. <laughs> Say it on that mic right there. Say it on that mic right there, dog. Let me even my boy K9 right there. Lucky you ain't shit. <laughs> Thank you, dog. Uh, we got a phone call right here. This is my boy, uh, Crazy Bone the Assassin. We've been through some What's trials and tribulations boy? together. What up, Crazy? What's up? I couldn't help but calling, man. I heard you guys talking about apartments right now and whatnot, right? I actually managed two apartment conferences in different areas up here in the high desert. So let's go, and baby. First, well, first of all, before, you know, besides all that, great podcast right now. You know, I, I, you know, since I've been watching, like I haven't been watching long, maybe, I don't know, maybe a year. But so far, this is the best one yet, bro. I, like, I got to tell you. Let's go, doggy. It's so good to have somebody on the platform. There's a lot to say, bro. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, and, 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 and so the homie Crazy Boone, the assassin, was with me last time that I got arrested. We got arrested in a motel room. The hooters fucking kicked it in and shit, dog. You know what I mean? And I and I ran up to the cops, dog. And I said, homie, what the fuck you want? You know what I mean? And when I did that, I flicked the dope. That I had a sack of dope out my shit, dog, so somebody can stash it. You remember that shit, dog? You know what I mean? You know, we were on the county jail and shit. We were in Arizona. We went to Arizona for one day to party, bro. But sometimes when you party with big luck, dog, you know what I mean? It, it, it consists of too many down. The fucking things. Remember that shit, yeah. dog? We had rental That's cars. This is my boy Crazy Boone the Assassin. We made some good music there. Let's get back together on that, dog. Yeah, I love you, brother. Well, since you just said the whole music thing really quick, can I bless can I bless the platform with something? All right, go ahead. Fool, what you got? All right, well, check this out. Listen up, Hente, go on and put your ears on. The Hoodstock podcast. Yeah, it's on. Man, I just got stuck. The Hoodstock podcast, yeah, it's on. The, the seeds have been planted, the roots have upgrown. The only thing left is to bask in sun's Crazy Boom, the assassin, baby. 
There you go, baby. There we go. There we go. Crazy Boone the Assassin, Dougie. You know what I mean? Even though he got stuck, it's okay, <laughs> dog. You know what I mean? Yeah, we'll you, we'll hey, we love you, baby. You've been through some times in my life, dog, that were very hard, dog, when everybody was trying to fucking kill me and shit, dog. You know what I mean? We were recording music right, at times right, when right. bullets were flying through the fucking walls and shit, dog. This dude has yeah. been around me a long time, dog, and I've always been like a one-man army type of shit. Like, I'll, I'll duct tape the clip, dog, upside down from each other, dog. You know what I mean? So I can flip that bitch around real quick and shit that was the type of dude that i was dog you know what i mean and that's the type right. of dude that i still am today dog but in another form in another nature dog you know what i mean you know like i protect and, I, and, and i'm aggressive in 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 a positive way now you know what i mean you know like i'm aggressive in what i believe in i'm aggressive in 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 just like doing good just like you are bro me and you are so much alike dog in regards to just the way we like like the homie caesar said before he goes fool that's a motherfucking pit bull right there dog that motherfucker gonna bite your ass hot but bite you in a good way dog can you imagine being biting in a good way like oh shit that felt good bite me again fucking hugo yeah <laughs> you'll be biting asses really... all day long baby you know what i mean you know we make we make a living off of biting asses dog you know, that we all go through we even i have family that you know just like him you know we're doing 75 to life and you're lucky for this man he got out but you know i still got primos that are locked up you know, on some bullshit, you know, they, they ain't getting out, though. Absolutely crazy. Like, you, you, I thought it was a real positive thing. How you saying you're going back, you know, try to get them out, the whole ocean thing, you know, elders and all that, that's deep. That's what's it. up. Crazy, we love you, baby. Next phone call. Uh, you're on Hood Stocks. All Talk right. to us. You're on Hood Oh, what the f Bup. You hung up, and you can call back if you want. Crazy Boom the Assassin, that's my G right there. I love that fool. I, I, you know what I have? There's so many people that have been a part of my journey in different chapters, and they reach out to me now. You know what I mean? They're like, "What up, Luck? Bam, you doing your thing, dog? Ba ba ba, whoa whoa." And uh, you know what I mean? I'm just like, "Bam, what's cracking, dog?" You know what I mean? You know, um, and it's love, dog. It's love. It's always love. Um, you're on Hoodstocks. Talk to us. Hey, on that luck. What's up, compadre? What up, my G? What's cracking? Chilling, bro. I just wanted to say saludos, man, to your platform and yourself. And as a man pushing the Rasa card up here, um, I, I've listened to all the YouTube Rasa that have been popping up the last like five years, and it's hella dope to see us being represented finally. You know what I do, dog? And people put me in that box a lot of times, dog. You know what I mean? But you know what I represent, dog? I represent everybody, dog. I like not that. Ju not just the fucking rasa, dog. Yeah. Because if I did that right there, dog, you know what the rasa is gonna do to me, dog? I'm gonna walk outside one day and they're gonna put a bullet in my motherfucking head and shit. So this is for fucking every. You. This is for everybody, dog. You know what I mean? This is for white. This is for black. Blacks again. You know what I mean? Chinese. China skin. I just made that up right now. <laughs> but I'm just saying, it's for everybody, dog. I mean, it's for everybody, dog. Why? Because we, it doesn't matter what color you are, dog. We have similar struggles, dog, that people can relate on. And then you just got the weird people, dog, that are just fascinated by dudes like us, dog. You know what I mean? You it's know, like, and, and I hear you, yeah. But let's be honest, bro. We both eat arroz and frijoles, right? Yes, we do, dog. I just had some today, <laughs> dog. You know what I mean? And, you know, and, and I'm going to go one step further. I'm going to say, you know what I mean? Like, I'm up here in Northern Cali representative of Sacra, Barrio Northgate up here. And I don't see us as different. Is that you is that a, I mean? is that a South Sider neighborhood or a Norteño neighborhood? It's a northern neighborhood, brother. Okay, salute to you, brother. You know what I mean? Hey, Thank dog, there's, yeah. a lot of, there's a lot of Norteños that call in, dog, and I'll check it out like this, dog. You talk like a man, you show respect like a man, dog. All the above, dog, you get treated like a man. I don't give a fuck what side of the fucking fence you stand on, dog. And if That's anybody right. don't like that, dog, unsubscribe right now, dog, because you ain't ready for motherfucking hood stocks, dog. You know what I mean? That's we right. treat I love every, it, bro. We treat all men equally as long as they conduct themselves like a fucking man, a solid That's individual, right. dog. You know what I mean? That's right. And instead of like looking at my fellow, you know, hermano, my fellow brother differently, I look at him as a man. I look at her as a woman, right? He has kids. I have kids. They have kids. We have kids. You know what I mean? And that's how I look at people. And it's all love. And I just love it that we're being represented finally. It's just all, you know what I mean? Just. I don't know, man. I can't even explain it right now, but I just want to say saludos, bro. Thank and you, bro. Thank you, dog. 
Thank you, dog. Yep. And you know what? With me, dog, is I'm from down south, dog. I, I mean, yeah. there, if there was an up north homie representing this dog, maybe he would feel otherwise, dog. You know what I mean? Who knows? I don't know, dog. But I just know when I'm in the penitentiary yeah. and there's Nathaniels or there's yeah. different different uh, uh, structures of that nature, right? right? right, right. Um, it, it's always like you know what I mean. Until disrespected, it's respected. You know what I mean? But with that right, said, right. thank you, brother, for calling in, dog. Appreciate you, bro. Andale, gracias, bro. A ti, doggy. And I like to just, I like to, I mean, I'm 45 years old, baby. How the fuck am I going to be right here on some motherfucking, oh, fuck you, homie, where you from, dog? Like, that shit, that is really past no, me. No, and, 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 and what you said is real. Like, it goes beyond just, it goes beyond just brown. It's it's black. It's, it, it's, it's everyone. Everyone that's being affected by the shit that we're affected by. Like, there are a lot of individuals that have more in common with us than not. And and one hundred percent, I love the fact that you included that because that's very important. And as far as an individual calling from another side of the state, my boy, not only is he giving calling in to give credit in a respectable way, but he's actually acknowledging it for what it really is, which is all of us just being human beings. I love that, dog. I love that, bro. I mean, positivity is infectious, dog. You know what I mean, like it, it, you surround yourself with individuals that are all trying to do something with their life. Let's get this phone call right here. You know what I mean? In a positive manner. You know what I mean? And that shit feels amazing. You're on Hoodstocks. Talk to us. You're on Hoodstocks. Go ahead, baby. Hey, what's good, Lucky? What up, baby? Robert Who? calling from Nebraska. Nebraska. Let's go, dog. Uh, I've been watching your show for some time now, and um, when I saw when Mr. D got called by Eastside Colton, that was hilarious. But I just wanted to say... Brown Unity first, and I really love your show. It's you bring a lot of the real in this show, and yeah, fuck Adam Twenty Two and fuck Tyga. <laughs> you know what, dog? You know what? I'm gonna say this about Adam Twenty Two. When there's been points some time where I banged on him for being a culture vulture and this and that, dog. But I'll say this about Adam Twenty Two. Adam Twenty Two is a fucking genius, dog. That dude knows business, dog. And what that dude created right there, dog. I will. I will hope to create a quarter or a half of one day, dog. But you know what, dog? That dude right there, not only did he raise his shit up to the level where he's at, but he's given jobs to to black dudes, to to brown brothers, the homie, uh, uh, don't know, I don't know him, I, I, I can't call him a homie, but don't know, you know what I mean? Like he's, cre do know, yeah, he's created jobs for so many different people, dog, to take over his platform, but then again, it's just like, oh shit, some people be like, oh, he's pimping these dudes out. No, dog, he's just a businessman, dog. And, and he, bro, like, you know, so sometimes when I say that shit, it's, it's out of the ignorance of myself, dog, but at the same time, like, if he ever asked me to be on his platform, I would never be on that platform because you know what? I just I hold my, I hold myself on different uh, standards, and um, I respect. Yeah, I will never be on that dude's platform, dog, for nothing. I respect. For, the yeah, way for nothing, I, dog. I, I respect your You know, opinion, I would yeah. I would never sit with that dude just to just to forget the clout or or the, the recognition that I was on here. No, bro, it doesn't matter, dog. You can be on there, dog, but you're gonna get more respect on here, dog, because this is the streets, baby, and this yeah. the streets are real, first dog. Talk first. Yeah, absolutely, dog. Thanks for calling in, brother. Appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, bro. You have a good night, man. You too, no dog. Um, I'm all about brown unity, and yeah, have a good night, Lucky. Yeah, thank you, dog. I mean, 18 years, dog. You get down from 18 years and shit. I mean, I mean, we always ask everybody, bro. You know, out from 18 years, there, there's some things that people want to eat. There's some peop things that people want to fuck, dog. You know what I mean? You know, I mean, what was on? What was on? What was your list looking like, bro? My, I, I was, I was stuck. Even, even as you ask the question right now, I'm putting myself in the in the realest position that I was in. That being getting out of prison. Excuse me. I remember my brother, he picked me up in a fucking Uber. And I didn't I never been in an Uber before. I actually thought he was gonna tell me that he was gay because there was like this dude <laughs> on drivers. And then my boy was on shotgun and I'm like hugging my bro and I'm like, damn, what the fuck is this motherfucker doing? And he's like, nah, hey, I had to get an Uber, my boy. They discontinued the rental. A long story short, he was like, I was mad, fool, but I didn't give up. I was thinking about getting a U-Haul to come get you. And uh -oh. just because he figured that was the only shit that they were renting. Anyways, 
I was going down the 101 and I remember like looking to the side and for the first time in a very long time, I was going down this highway without no shackles, without no handcuffs. And I just, I couldn't help but to like be overwhelmed with emotion. Cause I was like, damn, these motherfuckers let me out. Like they just <laughs> fucked up. Fuck. I thought to myself like, fuck man, this is a fantasy. Yeah. Like how the fuck is this real? Like how the fuck is this happening? The marathon continues, baby. It 100% does. And you know, the, 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 the beautiful part about that is that like we get, we get to drive the, the vehicle this time. Like we get to honestly decide like where we go. Earlier you mentioned, you mentioned just being able to create a platform and your reasons to doing it. Like, and then you mentioned like having a purpose. You mentioned going beyond just passion, but actually doing like what your heart is guiding you to do. And I feel like that's when you find true fulfillment and enrichment. Like that's when you find yourself feeling enriched with like, with whatever feeling like really makes you feel like you're living a life worth living. You know, we think about it, dog. We think about it after we've gone through uh, just uh, a scenario of bad circumstances, right? That puts us in fucking very vulnerable situations, right? Like doing 75 to life, you know what I mean? For example, for yourself, you know what I mean? And, um, for those that are blessed to get out of those situations for a second chance, third chance, fourth chance, whatever the chance it was, right? You know, um, we, 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 we want, we, 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 I mean, you put so many years in that dog. How could we utilize that bad to good? You know what I mean? So what I'm saying with, is with the podcast, I mean, do I start a podcast? Do I become a victory outreach preacher? I mean, I'd be preaching my shit, dog. Like, honestly, dog, if I was a preacher, bro, I'd be like, you motherfuckers are going to hell if you don't put at least $100 in that basket. You know what I mean? You know? But but, but so in my head, that sounds super fly, dog. Yeah. But in the public side, they're going to be like, fuck you, Lucky, right? They're going to be like the callers calling in, fuck you, Lucky. You know what I mean? So we got, we got to find a way. And then I got to stay sober, dog. You know what I mean? Even though I like to smoke crack sometimes, dog. You know what I mean? So I can't be a victory outreach teacher because I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna be preaching. I'm gonna be like, <laughs> they're gonna be like, what's wrong with that fool's jaw? That fool was ganked the fuck out, dog. You know what I mean? I'm like, no, I'm not. God says I'm not, so believe me, bitch. <laughs> so we we try to find a a, 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 a calling for ourselves to to give back and self fulfillment because we're narcissistic individuals if you like to believe it or not right i am i'll say it in every relationship that i've been in they've said it you know what i mean so at this point they got me believing it <laughs> i know i'm being long-winded bro but i'm just saying um the podcast thing was a good thing that i can be myself i can drink some wine i can smoke some weed i can smoke them black and mild you know what i mean and i can uh still do good can you imagine you can still do good you can still get, you can still fertilize the earth with good stories and good people, you know what I mean? Not everything, like getting out from that thing. Some people go hardcore because we are hardcore gang members, so now we gotta go the extent of being a hardcore preacher. Yeah. Right? I'm sure you've been yeah, in a lot that, of those that, dudes. No, 100%, and you know, life isn't really about that. Life is whatever you want it to be. So just because people look at it and it's like, oh my God, don't do that. Like, no, wait a minute. But I'm doing this with a group of friends that became family. Like we're actually having fun yeah. and we're doing it our way. Happiness. Like motherfucking freedom is the way we want it to be. Just because you're constricted to a box of what it should look like, I'm not going to do that. And no judgment to the individuals that live that way. Like I'm just saying like we get to finally decide how we live our life. Let's live it. Let's, Let's live, live it to the fullest. And so since you've been out since 2018, I mean, where, where, I mean, what's the top, bro? What's the top? I mean, we all have goals, bro. And I, and I, and even to my kids, bro, and they might be super young, bro, but I, and I preach this to everybody around me. Like every year there should be goals met. You know what I mean? And I mean, the, people call it the new year's resolution. I'm going to lose weight, you know? 
A lot of times, that, I mean, the percentage is very small. I mean, it might happen for a cool minute, but I believe that goals are, are, are fucking key. I mean, you got to keep your own foot on your own neck. And so where are you headed in your life? Where are you going to just like, when are you going to like peak? Like, what does that peak look like, bro? That where you want to be at in your life for the ultimate get back, the ultimate fuck you. I, I, I love the way you put it. Like the ultimate fuck you. Um, I want to get to a point where I don't, where I don't, ha I don't lean on having to flip the people that I, at one point in my life I felt were absent. I, I want to get to a point in my life where I will say this for the in, within the next five years I want to eradicate the idea of charging any juvenile as an adult anywhere in the United States. I want to be able to like have individuals really feel like that charging kids as adults and then sending them to adult prison it, it is like sending their kid to an adult prison. Yeah, put yourself in that position like that. Yeah. 100%. Look at it different. So I, I wouldn't want to do that, but more importantly, like, I want to have the freedom of doing what I love to do without feeling like I got to pay the bills to do it. What do you love to do? I love to explore, my boy. I love, I, I love to really enjoy life in this world and travel and be able to actually like learn more from the people that surround me so that I can help more people. And I, more than anything else in the process of all of that, I never want to forget about the ocean I came from. Cause I grew up in that motherfucker. <laughs> like more than anything else, no matter what, I <coughs> always go back into the, the hottest, <coughs> the darkest, and the fucking most desolate areas in this motherfucking state. Because that's where I grew up at. And I'm gonna always remember where I grew up at. Straight up. You're in Hoodstocks, talk to us. <laughs> Shout out Hoodstocks, Compton in the house. Compton, that's what's up, baby? CPT. Nah, I'm fucking with y'all watching that shit right now. Hey, look, keep that shit up, dog. Shout out to homie on Hoodstocks. I fucking love you guys, dog. Stay Love you too, baby. Appreciate you, baby. Compton, baby. Stand the fuck up, uh, homie. Compton, stand up. Hub City. Hell yeah, dog. Hub City, dog. All right. All right, baby. I always fuck with my boys from fucking Compton um, in the penitentiary. Mostly in the penitentiary because we're a little far from each other. Highland Park, Compton. I mean, we're far in the sense of a dude that doesn't want to get out of his neighborhood. But <laughs> once you do, bro, you know what I mean? It's just really down the street. Um, and the hub, the homies from Hub City have always been just like... Like, really classic homies, dog. Just really, like, just, like, different from cats from the east side, northeast L.A., you know what I mean? And it's yeah. funny that you can just go down the freeway and just find another, yeah. uh, uh, you know what I mean, uh, personality of homies. Let's get this phone call right here. This is my boy right here. I love this dude right here. Let's go right now. Coño! Amigo. Que pasa? How you doing, man? Que on that way? Oh, man, I okay, man. I'm listening to the podcast, man. He's a good guy, you know? He's a good guy, bro. I feel the same thing, too. I'm really, I'm really like, when we have guests right here, Coño, like, what they do to me, dog, like, I'm a selfish motherfucker, dog. Because sometimes when I have dudes like this, dog, they're just fucking just, like, electrifying me with just positivity and to raise up and just be the best and 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 we all need that regardless of well i'm already doing it or whoop de whoop whoop like that just the positivity is crazy dog with this dude right here he's got a easy he's a he's a he's a little dude with a fucking giant fucking aura his frequency is just fucking maybe for some people overwhelming i mean i mean have you ever had females bro that were overwhelmed by your by you just <laughs> you bro uh, I'll, I'll say this, hey, man. Just like me, man. Yeah, that, 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 that's guy, what I was, right? and that's what I was gonna say. I'm I'm homegrown, and I'm raised by the people that I know from home, and, and my home just happened to be a spot that that was within walls. So like I'm homegrown, and and I I just I want to believe that I'm, if I'm a product of my environment, like let me represent the people that are from my environment. And you know what, dog? Hey, coño. What do you got to yes, say real sir. quick, Doug? So talk to me real quick, Doug, because I want to I wanna say something to this dude right here. Oh, man, just, you know, much, much respect to you, Lucky. The podcast is killing it, man. You what? got a lot of haters out there, but you're doing your thing. You stay on top, Papa. You know, when you got haters, bro, 
that's those, that's free promotion, dog. And we love you, Corey. That's right there. Yeah, that's free promotion, right dog. That's right there. And I love that shit, dog. And any one Google of those favors, and when any one of those haters, dog, you know what? I can't even give it to. I can't even. There's so many. There might be so many of them, dog, that I can't get every one of them fades now, dog. You know what I mean? Because we, we, we're raising up now, dog. I got to be that's like, okay. sign the waiver first, you little bitch ass fool, because I don't want to fuck your ass up, homie. And, and then you're suing me, dog, like some punk ass fool. So I'm like, homie, like, I get it, dog. You got beef of me you gotta sign these documents and so i can beat your ass dog can you imagine dog signing documents can you get your ass whooped dog you know what i mean like i'm with that dog you know what i mean uh, i had beef with some dude online and they're like they're like do a do a boxing match i'm a homie i ain't doing no boxing match dog we take it to the street right now dog you know what i mean you know like get the fuck out of here we were gonna videotape the boxing match dog you know what i mean i'm gonna be in some tantarans with a little fucking thing guarding my fucking huevos dog you know what i mean and a fucking and a, and a helmet on or something i don't know what what would that look like? I'm good with just, we could just hit the streets, baby. Just sign the way, be little bitch ass fool. <laughs> Sorry, dog. I'd rather just see you throwing your pockets. Exactly, man. dog. Oh, exactly, shit. dog. And we celebrate the haters, baby. And there's not too many of them. There's like two, three, you know what I mean? Like, and those dudes, you know what I mean? Those dudes were probably on the bus with you back in the day, dog. The short bus. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you, bro. <laughs> that was a good one. Said, that was a good one. He's like, that you just called like, me handyman. That motherfucker guy. <laughs> I'm just fucking no, with you, bro. You I'm sorry, dog. I love you, baby. Yo, we, we, we have fun right here, dog. <laughs> we just have fun here, dog. Feel free to take any shots at me as you want, dog. You know what I mean? Because yeah, I live in a glass house, dog. You know what I mean? Uh, Conyo, love you. Bye. Oh. That fool stayed in character, my boy. <laughs> he stayed in fucking character. <laughs> Look at that, man. That's a baseball bat. That's motherfucking the dank spot, dog. They don't fuck around, dog. You're on Hoodstocks. Talk to us. What's up? What's up, dog? What's up, homie? You got my fucking money, dog, or what? <laughs> He got panicked out. He was like, wait a minute, I called the wrong number. I got through. <laughs> I got through. I didn't expect to get through. Um, you know what, bro? I think uh with you, dog, I mean, what do you what are you representing right now, bro, besides uh um what 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 was it called of going back in prison, success stories? Yeah. Dot org. Yeah. Okay, what do you bro like we need you? I mean, this is just me right now. We need you on all these platforms, uh representing us on a lot of different levels, bro. Like, how are you doing that? I mean, how are we utilizing you, bro? Cause you're a fucking monster. You're an animal, dog. You know what I mean? You're wired up different. I mean, you are articulate, dog. You are intelligent, dog. You know what I mean? And you're a little handsome, bro. You know what I mean? A little bit of handsome. Thank you, thank you. Just a little bit, dog. about that. All right, I'm questioning. Well, the, well, the, right home, the homegirl fucking Kawanda texted me right now. She said, give me his number. You know what I mean? Oh, all right, Kawanda. Kawanda. <laughs> now, um, so next week, next month, not next week, but next month, I, uh, I head to New York, and we're going to premiere a documentary, Being Free. And the documentary really honestly revolves around individuals that at one point in time weren't even looking at what 10 years would look like, let alone what tomorrow would look like. Because today is what's important. And um, I, I mention that because I'm going to get to go to New York and a lot of times these places are saturated with white people. Have you been to New York? I've been to New York, but I was there for fucking 48 hours. I, I had to do two speaking engagements and then jump on a red eye to come back to LAX. So when you ask me, have you been to New York? Yes, I have. Have I actually been to New York? No, I have not. Yeah. And, and, I, and, and again, it, 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 I'm not knocking. I'm not knocking the opportunities that people jump in, right? But as far as like being able to have individuals go around and say their story, but what I will say is that I finally got to a point in my life where I'm able to empower myself and represent like to a point where I'm comfortable and I'm ready to be able to really honestly shed light on what's not being done. And what's not being done is like when individuals or counties and cities are not investing in our neighborhoods. Yeah. They're not investing in our people. Why not? And the reason why is because they don't see any value in us. They see us as labor workers and know nothing further than that. Who is us? 
at being everybody that's in the bottom of it. Anybody and everybody that gets to kick it in a fucking project and really doesn't understand why they're fucking up and why they're considered a fuck up. Anyone and everyone that's a part of a community that feels like we're lesser than somebody else. Anyone and everyone that feels that we can't make it in the way that other individuals have made it. Why would they feel like that though? Because of lack of resource that creates insecurity. They would, they, would, they would feel that way 100% because they don't feel secure in what it is that their life stands on. Let me ask you a question, dog, and this is just, an, this, is, they might, this might be an outlandish question to ask you, but I'll ask you potentially because you're an outsider of this, this realm, right? Why, why, why are black rappers driving Lamborghinis and why are Mexican rappers, a raza, Latino, whatever you identify with, dog, are driving Honda Accords? Why do you think that? No, 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 one hundred percent. Like, uh, one culture has influenced the other culture, where it's more popular to be one way than the other way. Like, no, one hundred percent. That's the reason why I don't say certain. I don't use certain language. That's the reason why I don't speak a certain way. Is because I one hundred percent understand that. I one hundred percent understand that you are what you are. You are what you believe you are. And when individuals start promoting something or start like really honestly supporting a certain individual, like we don't support ourselves. We don't support our own community the way we support other people. Yeah. Because we sure as fuck buy some rock, don't Julio, we'll sure as fuck do all kinds of shit before we actually really we'll sure as fuck throw two hundred bucks at a chick at a strip bar before we actually support our own community. And that's just that. Uh, I honestly feel like that's where the issues are at. Are we having an identity crisis and this time and era right now? You know, I mean, that 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 might be that might not align with what we're talking about right now, and it probably doesn't. No. Scratch that question. Yeah, scr scratch, scratch that. that question. Okay, <laughs> um, but it's we don't support our own the way we support everybody else and then we cry that's, about it at the end of the no, day. No, but that's, that's, that's really what I wanted to talk about because we don't have our Oprah. Who's our Oprah? Who, who's, who's, who's our Obama? Sure, it ain't me. Who, who's, 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 who's our, no, but that's not some real shit. Like, and, and, so I, I had the pleasure to know, to very, very closely, I'm very close with the founder of Black Lives Matter. I'm very close with her, and the one thing that I notice is like, it's not that she's saying that she's better than my people. It's not that she's saying she's better than me. She's just saying, fool, I'm backing up my shit. And if you want to roll, let's roll. And at the same time, it makes me feel like, well, what the fuck? Like, what am I, what am I, what am I bringing to the table when it comes to what's affecting me? Cause, cause fucking INS is outside the door for my family. Ice is just right there for my family. My uncle is in Rosarito right now, but who who could who could relate with that? And then and then what are we really doing to support the individuals that are being bounced back to the spot when they don't even have nothing over there? Like what are we really doing? Cause cause they sure as fuck doing. All I'm saying, my boy, is that 100. percent We're not really focusing on ourselves the way we should. Yeah, and I got I got shitted on a little bit when the. Uh, BLM uh, marches and all that stuff was happening downtown LA. What do you need, though? There know. you go, baby. But I always, my, my argument was that to the homies is, you know what, dog? What happens to them and what can affect them trickles down to us. Yeah, it trickles down to us. So what's happening to them is the same thing that's happening to us. So why wouldn't I support that? You know what I mean? Because... Yeah, they might be, BLM might be the forefront of the movement of what's being pushed, but at the same time, dog, it's colored faces, dog, that have the same fucking reflection, that are experiencing the same fucking things, dog, and if this movement can empower them, then certain laws can trickle down to us, you know what I mean? So let me ask you this, bro, when it comes to politics and shit, bro, and it seems like you've, deal, you've dealt with, like, so I watched the, what was it, Jerry Brown? Yeah. Jerry Brown, I watched you give him that award, dog. And then I watched him take it, dog. And I, I listened to his speech that you had with him, bro. You know what I mean? Or no, that he presented to yeah. the audience, dog. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and I said, you know what, dog? This dude, I mean, is a real dude. You know what I mean? He's basically said, like, who doesn't deserve a second chance? 
blah, 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 whoop, whoop, like, and he went on some biblical type of shit, dog. But do you think that everybody, all murderers, deserve a second chance? Hell yeah. I'm surrounded. Uh, I, there was a point in time in my life where I was surrounded by murderers, my boy. And, and, and I'm talking about individuals that were doing shit that they felt was right. And I'm not even saying that it's right. I'm just saying that's what they believed in. And if I'm out here, hell yeah. I, I believe that every individual deserves a second opportunity to not only be able to be their true selves, but to actually be able to be remorseful for the shit that they did, like take a human life away. Imagine being able to value yourself enough to the extent of being able to understand what you did. Like, have you ever done anything in your life that you regret or that you wish you could take back? A ton. So bro. now imagine, imagine individuals, a group of individuals, a large group of individuals, like really honestly wanting to take that shit back, but they can't. Yeah. You just got to live with it. But at the same time, they're like, man, fool, I'm willing to give him my all. That same loyalty that they were giving to certain things are able to flip and you're able to create individuals that were meant for greatness because that's what we were meant for. I think for a long time, we put ourselves in a position where we felt like we had to fall under the scheme of things. But nah, man, it, I, I really honestly believe that the time is now. The time is now where no matter where we're at in life, like we're gonna be at our greatness. We're gonna be at a scale, not only are we happy with our lives, but we're comfortable with knowing that what we're committed to is what's important. What's important, not the motherfucker's opinion next to me. What's important? Like who are your top five most important people in your life? Like what are the top five most important goals that you wanna accomplish before you die? And how the fuck are you living your life committed to what you're saying is most important? God damn it. Fuck me again. And not with that motherfucking blow up doll either. <laughs> See over there sitting next to Caesar. My boy, dog. You were like a fucking. You would have a blow. Man, I'm not even gonna look at that direction. <laughs> we got a blow That's up crazy, up. man. Bro, you're like a you're like a daily That's vitamin that we crazy. all need to take every day, dog. I mean, it's real shit, dog. Like, homie, you are. Have you wrote a book? No, I haven't. Have you thought about writing a book? No, I haven't. Bro, your testimony and the words that come out your mouth are so fucking inspiring, dog, that it just fucking raises the hairs off the back of my neck up, dog. You know what I mean? Like this this shit, dog, is needed. This is therapy. This is this is medicine. If you guys ain't taking this medicine right now, I mean, if you taking this medicine right now, light that shit up with fucking with fire emojis right now. If you take hey, the medicine. Hey, straight up, um, I'm hood. Hey, nice. You on you're my way raised. with that. You guys always do that too, dog. That's why I look at. Light that shit up with motherfucking fire emojis if you're feeling this motherfucking shit right now, dog. No, you know I mean, but, don't play with it. But no, on some real shit, like, hey, like, there goes my boy right there. It's gonna raise up. Go ahead, say your thing, dog. No, I just, I just, I just wanted to say like much, much love to the individuals that I was raised up with. Like, and and, and I'll never forget the the individuals that are still in there too. Cause man, you can't you can't help everybody. No 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 no. But this is a is that what you're saying, bro? No, that's not what I'm saying. What okay. I'm saying is I was surrounded by dudes that really do do the shit, like with dudes that really like honestly did that shit and were sentenced to that much time and and they're still in there and I, I like real shit. Like these are individuals that deserve to be out because as human beings, just getting older and recognizing certain shit. Like not all of us are articulate like this. Not all of us can can decide like this is what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna make a a fucking statement and get out. Like not everybody could do that. Yeah, and that, and and I, that keeps them locked away. Yeah, and I just I just I just I just wanted to remember the many individuals that may die in prison, the many individuals that have died in prison, whether it be of age or of cancer, like the many individuals that dedicated their life to some shit that really didn't take them beyond a prison cell. Like real shit, like good people are in there. And I and, and, and that's that's the fate that my mom, my grandma, my uncles, my aunts were telling me about. You either end up in prison or in or, or in the gravesite. And so when you go into these prison uh 
I mean, you go into these prisons and shit, dog. Um, wh- what are the conversations you have with these individuals? I, I, I get to know, like, what really is important to them. I get to actually see it because the majority of individuals that I'm talking to are lifers, have life without. Like, these are fools that some of them, like, know in their mind, like, I don't have a date. I'm not going to. There's no chance of me getting out because I have life without the possibility of parole. And they get to actually talk to me about what's most important to them. I mean, can you share any one of those conversations, dog? You know what I mean? Like, this is, this is. Oh, uh, hell yeah, hell yeah. I'm gonna I'm 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 share, I'm gonna share an important one right now. So, so, so the one conversation that I'm gonna share is my boy Alex. This is about a month ago, Sentinella. My boy Alex. Cause you know you can see this shit, motherfucker. <laughs> so watch. My boy Alex. With your legal phone. <laughs> no, 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 no. Watch, watch. Alex was serving like over 18 years. He did and, and with other shit stacked up. And he really didn't know what his fucking life or his future was looking like. And I was and I was doing uh I was facilitating the workshop at Sentinella. And last month, last month they were like, hey, Hugo. I was like, you motherfuckers gotta tell me what you wanna eat. I'm gonna get you whatever you want, fool. Say it, fool. I'm gonna go get it. I'm gonna go get it. <laughs> and they were like, fool, we want pizza, but not the regular pizza. We want Pizza Hut. And cheese, I'm like, cheese, cheese in the crust. I'm like, I got you, my boy. I got you. So I got like 16 pizzas, fool. It's like 10 motherfuckers graduating and I got 16 pizzas. I'm like, don't trip. I'm gonna make sure you ship pizza for a week. <laughs> yeah, and they wanted wings and fucking Cinnabons. Hell yeah. So I, and, and they were like, look, when you get the soda, don't get the regular shit. You already know what we get in canteen. We want you to get a Hawaiian punch, strawberry and orange and shit. So I went to the Mexican stores and I got Hawaiian punch, Fanta. <laughs> I got Fanta and shit. But look, look, boy. my boy Alex, he went up and he had to give his tenure plan at the last week with that being graduation. And he was like, you know what, man? In three years, he was his tenure plan. He goes, in three years, I see myself getting out. I'm gonna get out and I'm gonna create my own business. And then he started being very, very descriptive of how I realized how much food CDCR throws away because I work in the kitchen. And I figured out a way of helping the homeless. He goes, specifically the mothers. He goes, and I want every woman that has kids to get flowers once a week. I, this, this fool, I swear, I was looking at him. I was like puss in boots. I was just looking at I him. I mean, like, can, you imagine the, can you imagine this lady that's getting the letters, bro? No, no, She's no, like, no, 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 <laughs> hey, no, 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 no. <laughs> but this, see, the trippier part about it was- she can't wait to get a so letter. Much. So the trippier part about it is this fool was fucking genuine. And I'm like, and then he said, and Hugo's gonna help me create this nonprofit organization. And I was like, well, boy, I got you. You get out, I'm gonna help you do that shit. I'm gonna help you fund that shit. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna do it. I promise you. And he goes, you promise me? I was like, I promise you. You're promising I, a prim- prisoner that's doing life. Yes. Why, but, but, but bro, dude. I don't even know what the fuck I'm doing. Trip out, trip <laughs> okay. out. The story ain't over. <laughs> Go ahead. So two weeks, two weeks ago, I got a phone call. And he go, I go, hello. And he goes, hey, Hugo. I go, who's this? And he goes, it's me, Alex. And I go, what Alex? Because my brother's name is Alex. And he goes, I graduated from Sentinella two weeks ago. And I'm like, man, I could call Alex right now. He goes, I graduated from Sentinella two weeks ago. And I'm like, you're the motherfucker that graduated and you gave your tenure plan? He goes, yeah. I go, what's up? Who are you calling me from a cell phone in there? And he goes, nah, I I'm home. I go, how the fuck did you get home from two weeks ago? <laughs> and he goes, the fucking judge, fool, they exonerated me. They fucking dropped all charges. They released me immediately. He goes, I'm not even on parole, fool. I go, where the fuck you at? He goes, I'm in Pasadena. I go, fool, we're gonna have dinner, my boy. <laughs> he goes, fool, I don't even have an ID. I don't even have a social security. I go call this motherfucker right now to prove that it was just a fucking joy. It was just a joy to see that a dude that wrote his 10 year plan, a plan that wasn't gonna happen, fool. This shit was a, as much fantasy to me as it was to him, so much so I was making empty promises. I was telling him, I'm gonna do that with you, fool. I'm gonna do that nonprofit organization that you want. I'm gonna rock it with you. And guess what? It wasn't, it, it wasn't a fantasy, my boy. It's a reality. God. 
That's how amazing life is. I could call this motherfucker right now. I call got- him right now. Give me his number. No, give me his number. Put his number. Text me his number. Let's call him right now, dog. Whoa. God damn it. Fuck you, Lucky. You so, done hit it out the I, park I, I, again. I got, I got him down as Netflix, Alex. I'm sorry. So I got him down as I'm Sorry about tonight, right. HBO. I got him down as Alex Centinella. G- yeah. Get, get his number down. Let me see. Let's call him right now. Let's All see right, if he yo. answers. If he doesn't answer, I'm going to text that phone and say, it's Hugo, fool, pick the pick up. Motherfucker, I'm kidnapped. <laughs> oh my god, dog. Let's go, baby. Oh shit. Let me talk to him real quick. Yeah, you talk to him right now. Talk to him. He's not picking up. He's like, I don't I don't recognize his number. Let's leave my voice my mail at least. Text him, text him. Sorry. But the person you called has a voicemail box that has not been set up yet. Oh, he just came home. He ain't got no voice. Goodbye. Oh, I want to leave him a message and shit. Hang up, hang up. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm get it up. Okay. Motherfucker, I'm kidding. Oh. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, my God. Let me go. Hold on. Let's get this phone call right here. Hold on. Yo, you're on hood socks. Hung up. Fuck you. So anyways, now you're good. This is the shit that motivates me. Like two, like so they graduated. So we're in August. They gra- they graduated a month ago now, a, a little over a month ago. And and that fool is free. And he finally, he got at me the other day to tell me, fool, I got my ID, I got my social security card. Like, I'm I'm good to go, I'm good to go. And I'm like, my boy, remember what I told you? Remember you Remember you gave me your 10 year fucking plan? And remember you read that shit off and I told you, you gotta read it off in front of everybody, fool, do that shit in front of everybody. And he was like, yeah. I go, man, I got you, my boy. I'm gonna help you out with any and all connections that I have. Any on all network that I have built in the last four years on on some shit where I don't even give a fuck what their agenda was. Motherfucker, I got my agenda too. Like any and all that, like I'll connect you. You're on Hoodstocks, talk to us. Hello? Hoodstocks, baby, let's go. I kissed. Thank you. Apologize about that. Yeah, hey. he's not responding. No, that's all good. He's doing his thing right now. He might be knee deep into something right yeah, now. Yeah, you, know? you know, he's like, wait a minute. C- cooking some spaghetti or something. I don't know. <laughs> knee deep in some spaghetti. Spaghetti. <laughs> yeah, but that's the reason why I do what I do, bro. Like, real shit. Like, I, I, so I was raised to be about family. You know, the pozole, the fucking buñuelos, the fucking... All that shit, fool. Like I was raised with neighbors that actually looked for one another. We looked out for one another. Like we really, we had fucking piñatas and parties, and and it was fucking fun, man. It was, it was, it was love. I was raised around that, and so, so when I think about my essential self as to what I'm meant to do in life, like I'm meant to bring that back, man. Like bring that back to your feeling of when you felt love of when you felt like you were worthy of doing something and actually being somebody in life and then going out and accomplishing that shit because, motherfucker, we support you in the process of it. Shit, like, um, straight up. Let's go, baby. Like, I mean, speaking of love, bro, I mean, I, 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 I mean, you, you are an individual that came out of the penitentiary with high expectations. You talked about trust. Like, fool, like, homie, check it out. I'm out now. And some people get out with the, the opposite, and they're like, they got to earn their trust back. You know what I mean? I mean, you, you, I, I feel like when you go in at 16 years old, dog, you never have the opportunity to just like, all right, I, I'm 16 years old. I fucked over so many people. I got to get out now after 18 years and earn my trust back. You came out with fucking just like standards and said, hey, yeah, I'm out now. But you know what? I expect certain things about the people around me and shit. I mean, that is a is a 
very, very different uh, stance in regards to maybe a lot of individuals to get out, you know, but so true to a person that's 16 years old. I mean, you got out with standards and shit, you know what I mean? And so when it comes to trust, when it comes to love, bro, you know what I mean? Uh, I mean, damn, bro, if you're a female in a relationship with you, bro, you know what I mean? Like, the expectations are through oh, the fucking God. roof, dog. I'm sorry, babe. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all I wanted to get I'm out of my apology. Man, I swear, like, that's 100% true. Because the, the, there are many times where, like, even she'll say, like, man, you're mad. Like, you, you, you seem like you want to be alone. Like, you seem like you want to be alone. And I'm like, man, it feels safer to be alone. It, feel, it feels safer to just know, like, okay, if I got nothing coming, then I got nothing coming. But let me make sure that I make it all on my own. But you, but the truth is, is I can't do it on my own. I can't. Like, I, I've come so far. Look, man, I, there was a point in time that I wished that I would be living with my son. That shit was a fantasy. It's happening right now. There was a point in time that I wished I lived by the beach. I live four blocks from the beach. There was a point in time that I wish I wasn't on parole. I'm not on parole. I could go wherever I want to go. Like, my life is a fantasy. My life is everything I wanted it to be, and everything from this moment forward, it's, it's on the house. <sighs> I wasn't supposed to make it this far. And I mean that shit genuinely, man. I wasn't supposed to make it this far that... Like, I can't wait. Look, bro, I, so my figures obviously are not 55 a year. For 100%, they're not. And, and I see myself touching a point where I won't have to worry about that. We won't have a conversation about that because that is not a factor. I, I want to be able to live life and do what I love to do. And, and what I love to do is be effective with just being a human being. <sighs> Being able to connect with other individuals that are going through something that that we could relate with, and then meet each other in the reality of it, Let's not go, bull, not bullshit each other with some fucked up, fake ass conversation, but really honestly get to the essence of shit. <sighs> like, man, what's bothering me right now? Like, what is it really? Let's go. Like, what is it really? Like, is it really like I'm covering it up with this, or is it really like? Motherfucker, I'm going through something right now, and I really never had anybody to actually share that with. Let's go. And if it's that, then let's do that. I'm, I, I, and then and then we follow greatness, and then we go into what the fuck we were meant to do, because we sure as fuck weren't meant to be bottom of the barrel, my boy. We sure as fuck weren't meant to just be some dudes that are going to be subservient to other people, constantly telling us what to do. Fuck that. We don't have to live that way. We don't. <sighs> so many times I can press that. Do you have a problem um, with uh, with like superiority with people telling you what to do at this point Fuck in your yeah. life? Yes and no. I have a problem. So look, man, I get pulled over by Border Patrol when I come back from Calipatria. And I'm telling you, as the summer gets hotter, a motherfucker's starting to look questionable. <laughs> so this I dude is that. a stand-up, straight up. No, 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 no. <laughs> and I get that, but at the same time, fuck you. So these motherfuckers pulled me out of my car. They were like, they were like, "Are you a U.S. citizen?" I was like, "Fuck yeah, yeah." And they were like, "Can you go to the right?" I go, "Go to the right where? Over there?" I go, "Why?" And he was like, "Because." And I'm like, all right, fuck it. This this seems like something's about to happen. So I go over to the right. He tells me, can you get out of the vehicle? I go, for what? And he goes, well, we need to search the vehicle. I'm not going, I'm not allowing you to search the fucking vehicle. And for the first time in my life, my voice had a certain bass. And I'm telling you, my fucking voice lacks bass, my boy. No, it doesn't, sir. It go doesn't, ahead, though. It doesn't. I recognize it doesn't, but... I, what I will say is this, for the first time in my life, I actually felt the courage, instead of running away from a motherfucker that wears a badge, to actually look at him and be like, nah, fuck no. 
and I'll be getting in your fucking superiors about this shit as well. <laughs> Recognize that. Like, Ho! Like, Let's go! Hood like, stocks, baby, on a Friday night. Fuck you. <laughs> Bro, everybody give it up for Hugo Gonzalez. Oh. Oh, my boy, God much, love. Damn it. much love to you for you do for what you do, my boy. Oh, you create this God, platform, dog. boy. You create this shit. You uh -huh. you allow individuals to come in here and be themselves. And I thank you for that. Much love for that. I mean that shit genuinely. You were brought in this world for a purpose and you're serving it right now as we speak. Let that breathe. Let that breathe. Yeah, don't cry, homie. Don't cry. Don't cry. Nah, nah, you know what, dog? You know what? Cry, lucky, it's okay. Cry, cry, cry. Nah, cry, dog. Cry, cry, cry. <laughs> nah, dog. <laughs> nah, dog. You know, um, you know, life is good, and you do what you do with it. You know, at the end of the day, like we had on our last podcast, with our last last guest is, uh, we are God, and we are in control. There's some things that are in, in inevitable. If I'm saying it correctly, I'm sorry. I'm slurring. Blame it on the dank spot. 420, follow him on Instagram. <laughs> um, our greatest sponsors. One of our greatest sponsors. But you know what, dog? Life is what you make of it, you know? Let's, let's, let's fuck the fade talk. Lucky's fucked up and he's going to say some stupid shit. No, life is what the fuck you make it, dog. That's you know what I mean? If you're sitting on the fucking sofa right now or a futon, dog, or some fucked up ass mattress, dog, that got a lot of motherfucking that, nuts on it and it's all not from you, dog, you know what I mean? That's it's okay. Like I've been there. You Me know too. what I mean? Me too. Shout out to the homegirl. I, I love you, girl. You served your purpose and we appreciate you. And I don't want to say this on a male chauvinist. That's, that. That's on me. That's on me. That's on me. Not him. That's a reflection of me. Cancel me right now. There goes another motherfucking thing to cancel. I'm just saying like this. We serve our purpose in both parts of the motherfucking road. You know what I mean? If it's the homegirl, if it's the homeboy. Like, you didn't know what the homeboy had to do to get to that point right there. You know what I mean? He might have robbed three liquor stores to feed the family. You know what I mean? Like, let's not forget about that shit. And I'm not saying that's good. But I'm just saying at the end of the day. Um, life is valuable, you know, and, 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 and to be the, uh, at the end of the day, you don't commit the crimes, um, treat the women right, you know, and, um, what you put in the world is what you're going to receive. Now, if shit's not, if you're sitting on that back to sitting on that futon or motherfucking sofa, if, if you're not putting good into the world, then, then you need to fucking stand beside yourself and analyze yourself and figure out where you can make changes because there's a big reason why a lot of people go and donate to the homeless and this and that and shit like that because this is a balance in life. You got to have a balance in life. You can't do all bad. You know what I mean? You got to do good. And when you do good, honestly, dog, you don't got to believe in no type of religion, but it's just the, it's law, it's physics, it's gravity, dog. You know what I mean? Um, it's going to, it's going to return the favor and shit like karma. Like I believe in karma so much. Do you believe in karma, brother? And I know we're trying to get out of this bitch, but, <laughs> and I'm going to get out of this right now, dog. But karma, dog, I believe it a hundred percent. Like if I was doing the boys in this podcast wrong, dog, you know what I mean? Then, then I would feel that I'm, I'm acceptable to any type of bad things coming my way and shit with my family so on and forth. But with that said, everybody give it up for fucking Hugo yeah. Gonzalez. Yeah. We're out of here. Yeah. Fuck you, Lucky. Shut the fuck up, you drunk idiot oh, that just cool. fucking took a microdose of shrooms. Um, <laughs> hey, so uh, did I just tell him myself? <laughs> um, how can people link up with you, bro? Um, so on uh, on Success Stories uh, uh, at Hugo at SuccessStoriesProgram.org there you go, baby. We gone. Like, subscribe, slap your old lady, or she might slap you back. All that good shit. We out of here. Hoodstocks, baby. On a motherfucking Friday night. Netflix.